together. But maybe. Anyway, I, I mean, maybe. Maybe not together. We'll see. We'll see what the plan is and see what RNG's plan is. Yeah, see what they're going to be going for as they've been... How's RNG been doing? I'm going to look up the scores, actually. Yeah, they've been doing their ETs and their Muranas. Mm. Lanem's been having really good games overall. They had some rough ones. They picked, uh, I think they picked an anti-mage earlier today. Uh, yes, that was RNG, right? RNG picked an anti-mage against EG, and yeah, they, they went 1-1, one, one, yeah. right? No, they got 2-0 by EG. They got 2-0 by EG. They got 2-0 by EG. They did. They got 2-0 right. by EG. Yeah. Pretty sure. You are correct. They got 2-0 by EG today. Yeah. So, uh, a bit of their series down. They're, they're definitely on a bit of the opposite half of the half of the group compared to OG, who's sitting very, very much towards the top. ZRNG can't really afford to lose another series. Yeah. But OG looking scary today. They're yeah, looking with some super, innovation. Super confident. And these were games as well. If you did miss them, I highly recommend you go and watch them. And apologies if you now have been spoiled on the result. But they were games that were turned around as well. These were games that OG was behind. Yep. And they were able to still grab that win. And yeah, they were they were really fun. And they're innovative and we're starting to we're probably gonna see teams maybe even maybe not copy, say, but teams are definitely gonna be inspired to be trying and Man scared, you know. right? You're playing yeah. against OG, it's kind of like, well, okay, these these boys did their homework. They've got some new strats in their pockets. You gotta be prepared for them. You don't necessarily know where where that where a hero's going when you see it in a draft with OG. It could be played in, in a number of positions. Yeah, I'm hoping for, hoping for at least one, one out of the box, yeah. right? Like either the Invoker, either the the IO. Maybe we even go back to having like Ana playing some type of like Slark hero, uh, like that, like something, something along those lines. A uh, couple of Slarks not very out of the box. I mean, but we Slark. Slark but, uh, you're saying your standards very low there if you're gonna be excited by a Slark pick. Well, I got excited when Ana played the Slark when he was at Epicenter when he busted out the like uh, the Blink Drum Midas Diffusal kind of thing, and ev everybody just kind of got inspired by that. I don't know, it's fun. It's fun. But fine, you know. Okay, fine. How about the Seb tree? You know, the core tree. Yeah, again, that's, that's not really that much out of the box. That's OG's goodbye. core and core. That's yeah. their bread and butter. Well, bread the and Seb butter's tree. now the IO and everything now, too. Come on. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> IO, is, IO is still in there. <laughs> they, uh, was not banned out in the opening phase. They RNG, picked understandably, yeah. rather than banning the, the mag out an inch when, when you're against OG. So Shadow Demon's in the pool. Yeah, they it would is, like yeah. to do it. Shadow Demon. I, they could do SDI. Oh. <laughs> they did do they did do SDI uh -huh. in the first game. Did they have SDI with the eye in the second game? I don't uh -huh. think so. They had it. Oh, they had in both. Mm -hmm. All right. So they really like it today. So there's no reason why they wouldn't if they want to keep it to, to the winning strap. But they'll change Chen. it up. We're gonna see some Chen into the mix. Ooh, AA does not does not have a lot of fun versus Chen. I'll be I'll be quite honest. Sure, your AA blast but is quite nice versus the hand of God. Chen and IO, but hand uh, of God, tether. Oh my God. You know what I mean? <laughs> Extra regen, dude. The divine favor plus tether, period. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. Yeah, just absolutely. Get a heart Pick plus divine eye. favor plus tether. It's like 600 plus HP being transferred to people. We'll see. We'll see. Do they want to run the eye? Is that what it's going to be? The meta last time for OG was damage reduction. This time is going to be amplification of regen. Let's see what it's going to be. Oh, their shaker. I'm down for some shaker. We haven't really seen many, much shaker releasing the games we've covered. Have we ever seen any shaker in the games we've cast? I don't think we've cast a single shaker. I don't think we've gotten one. We but haven't there's seen been a single shaker, but there has been some. Yep. Okay, being played or elsewhere, but uh, no, personally, we've not we've not been in a game with a shaker, so that'll be a lot of fun. RNG, the SK. Now that is a hero that we have seen a lot of. Yes, and uh, of course, rise. very nice with the AA. Those two, a bit of a team fight in a box together. Yeah. A lot of setup and huge amounts of magical burst to, to sort of come in whilst enemies are underneath that ice blast debuff. I think this is also one of the heroes that I uh, so I was just I was talking to a couple of the players and everything. So now with AA, you saw like in the past in the last couple of tournaments, it was like Sven and Wraith King, right? Their stuns actually don't work with cold feet anymore. You can usually walk out of it and you don't get stunned. However, Sanking Stun is one yeah, of those that lasts true. long enough. Since all these other ones have been nerfed, you know, you look at uh, what Wraith King Stun is what, 1.2? Well, well, 1.1 1 even? What's Sven's? Sven's is now. Sven's is right also, down there. It's right down there, 1. Sven's 2. is 1.25. Yeah, this one is enough. a 1.6 second stun, so it will allow you to connect those cold feet easier. Back in the day, well, when it was Sven used to have 2 seconds. So Sanking's was 2.17 as well. With just one level, just one level. In it. A lot of heroes oh had just a oh flat dear. two seconds. It's a good job we time. moved away from that one. Um, that was a value point and a half for uh, yeah. pretty much the entirety of Dota 2's existence. There was so many heroes that had yeah. those type just of things. One point, yeah. <laughs> two seconds done. Right, like there used to be like when three points were better than like an efficiency four points, yeah. but like for Death Prophet, no one would get the fourth point in the wave because three points was more efficient. There's, there's been a lot of like. 
crazy stuff. But yeah, Sanking A, tons of magic damage. I'm Even afraid, I'm afraid they banned the Slark. They did ban Anna Slark. Oh, they did take it. I, I, was, I was thinking that they could definitely look for a Slark, especially if there's a Sanking right away. Like That's definitely one of those that you can look at to put pressure on. Is it, I mean, when you have a hero like AA, is it just not... Slark is still annoying, what? Because Slark is expected to, to sort of kill you in more situations than you're actually going to find you yourself landing Ice Blast and, yeah. and messing up his initiation. Yeah, okay. most of the time. It's just a ridiculously yeah. strong hero that can just make the support the supports just have yeah. no impact. He gets in the back line, you're dead. Uh, Pugna's banned. And, yeah. uh, so they don't want to get quick pushed with Chen and Pugna. Yeah, I guess that's what they're most worried about, rather than necessarily protecting an upcoming pick. Yeah, I mean, it's an, it can be a little annoying for sanking and stuff like that when you start your epi channel. Oh, if there's a ward yeah. down, the blink, the, you know, there's a couple other reasons, but I yeah. think it's mostly just because of that push that can come out. And Earthshaker plus Pugna, very strong duo that they can run. Because the Shaker, we don't know exactly who it is. We've seen Seb play it mostly, but Jarex still can, of course, potentially. Well, Seb's been playing it mostly recently. It's still yeah. not mainly Jarex? Yep. Mostly okay, Seb. more of a Seb. Okay. At least the game that I tuned in, Seb was playing. Seb was playing it, the Shaker. And that was the only yeah. one that I thought, I think that I saw them play it. But haven't seen every single one of their games, so. Yeah, that, I mean, I guess that makes sense. But it, yeah, so definitely s still open. Well, because would you would you like sort of Shaker Chen as your support duo? Does, does that do enough, or is there a weakness to having those two as your two supports? Mm, yeah, there's definitely weaknesses to it. I think I'd prefer to have that yeah. as Seb, but it's flex yeah. still. You can still make it. You can still yeah, if it, if it, it, it ends up being yeah. that there's not going to be a good lane for the Shaker to go into. Uh, the well, with the lifestealer band, maybe that does Makes it more lead of a core. it towards indeed yeah. trying to make sure he doesn't have that terrible matchup in a lane where he's not really able to put any pressure on. Mm -hmm. There's an AA sanking, but I'm already seeing a shaker. Does OG maybe want something like a morphling, even though they're into AA? I'm morphling Earth Shaker is absurd. I'm still seeing the Anna Aya. You're still seeing the Aya? I mean, yeah, sure. yep. <laughs> I think Aya or morphling look like really look like a lot of fun. The band lifestealer, even though AA a is hero that just them. rages. Makes a beeline for the Aya. The band Naga Siren, a hero that just sings, gets on top of the Aya. <laughs> yeah. Any argument to make it work? <laughs> no, no, I just oh, we, we, we wanna, I want to see some in the flesh. I want to see it with the divine favor. I want to yeah. see how much it's... It's going to be 600 HP per second if he's tethered. Do I think they just finished the... Yeah, could, but it's OG. Who knows with OG, right? And they aren't going to do it. They're going to go with an Anna spec to this game. Make sure they've got a good way of getting on top of the AA. And a carry that... Have we, have we seen a lot of Spectre from sort of all around the groups? I don't think we have, have we? We've seen a couple, but not a, a crazy amount, yeah. We saw a Midas Spectre, I believe. Oh did it win? On Chaos. It did end up winning. That was the game it that Alliance... It did end up winning. I, don't, I wouldn't say through, but they... they well, didn't that was the game we casted. No, 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 it wasn't a game we casted. It was one I was watching with uh, with Loda. Where he was yeah, he was just looking at his team. And right. he was, yeah, they, didn't, they were playing versus Global Silence and stuff like that. Yeah, they just had a bit of a rough time. But they did win. No, the Alliance ended up losing, but Chaos ended up winning with okay, the Spectre sorry, Midas. Chaos ended yes. up winning with Spectre Midas, yep. yeah. Trying to watch as many games as possible. I'm just walking around the room out there and just yeah. looking at every Dota game. Dude, you know what this would be a really good game for? What? A uh, hero that no one ever plays, but it would be amazing, this matchup. Viper. Ruins the Shaker, ruins the Spectre. Uh, it, act, you know what I mean? I mean, and they have another, amp another Toxic no Amplified by it. it. Nobody is, plays what it. Is, what is wrong with Viper? It didn't. Did it get nerfed that badly? I mean, it actually looks really good. You're right. That's a that's a you fair know what I mean? point. Viper with these heroes with they an AA, the damage Viper too. plus AA, you just shred in them. You're ruining their play. They're not gonna do it. They're gonna it's pick an Ember. Not, it's just no not one plays it. No one's playing it. Yeah. Once they buff the damage talent from whatever it is, one sixty two hundred or whatever it is right now. Once they it's make it four hundred, when they get four hundred yeah. damage talent, yeah. Because <laughs> even now with the one sixty, you're you still don't taking the other talent. Right? <laughs> yeah, we silence. No, they do, they go for Ember. Hits much better. Good catch. Mm, they could, still, it could be, it could be a safe lane, but we'll see. Yeah, crazy amount of damage, but, but, lots of magic damage but, but, already on yeah, RG. It's one of Setsu's classes. So. Yes, for sure. Earthshaker, this could be. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't think I've seen Topson play, but Earthshaker versus Ember. If it is a mid Ember, that's a matchup oh, we've yeah, seen. I mean, he definitely Very good can, for Shaker. Right? Topson, he, he loves those sort of mids. Right, that's that seems. It's, like you know, it. maybe we haven't seen him on that specific hero, but yeah, he, Topson's play style would very much be suited towards a mid Shaker. Yeah. It's cool they go for the spec. I mean, the Spectre is just a safer pick. I, know, I was saying Morphling just because it's fun with Shaker, but you don't want to play Morphling into the AA sinking. So, yeah, they've got the Spectre. I think Spectre, you know, there's going to be that timing, sure, if the Ember is able to get a really good start, you can sort of get around, put pressure on the Spectre. But if the game starts to go on, suddenly yeah, Spectre doesn't really care about the Ember, right? In the, if you get to the later portion of the game, once you're tanky enough, 
Ember just doesn't do enough damage uh, as, a, as a core against him. And that's we're, we're going to get to see some fun. Some some Jax Invoker. Yeah, so, it. As, it, as you expect... Uh, no, I think it's... Oh, you're right. Thompson plays it very well as well. He does. Yeah. And it's great matchup versus the Ember Spirit if it is in the mid lane. He, he can always you are right. Topson so. could definitely be calling to play that matchup. Could be a little bit flexible still. Yeah. They do have the last pick as well, so this is one where it's like, ah. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, as you said, Topson could play Invoker. He could play the Shaker. He could play whatever they pick next. Jarrett could play the Shaker and the Invoker. Seb could play the Shaker. Yep. Or the last pick. Keep it open. It's all up. It's all up in the air. Back to RNG. Still probably leaning towards the more traditional lineup of expecting their position. Uh, well, their, their four position and their carry. Uh, Pango's going to be out. So, is that so is that actually going to be what's the support SK? Or you think this is going to be a support Pango? Off lane sanking, that's probably Lanem's Pango, right? Lanem Pango, that making makes, plays around the map. Sounds more like a Lanem thing. And what's good about the Pango this game? Why would, why would you... Why, why do you think they they want to try and slide the Pango in? It just gives a lot of more team fight. It's more magic damage. Mm -hmm. It's They have a crazy amount of amplification already for it too. With the AA. Yeah, it's a solid team fight to bring in. Oh, final ban from OG. We'll see what sort of a read they're getting off of this draft. Not much time to, to work with as they're right down into the bonus time. There is so much damage on the side of RNG that I'm looking at right now. I ban out the Kunkka. So expecting the expecting the Ember to be safe lane or on one of the side lanes. That feels like that's Invoker mid then. I'm seeing Kunkka ban. But I'm also just seeing Kunkka every single game, so I might just be... We're thinking that one. No, I, th I think you might be right because they right. they they're, they're saying this is Invoker mid. That's what I'm thinking too. Right? And if that's the case, yeah. RNG may have been inclined to move the Ember to the safe lane yeah. and pick something else for the matchup. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. Yeah, if it tops and he's he's making the call. I don't want to play against a Kunkka mid. It's like always been one of the worst yeah. matchups for Invoker in the game. RNG final ban said as we said, there's a, a lot of ways that OG could play this lineup. RNG Probably still most technically can flex too, but theirs is not nearly yeah, as flexible. Most likely, they've saved Jarex's pick till last. What's it going to be? Hmm. If they... It could be Jarex Invoker, and it could simply be top zero. They are going to have they're the They're in the same they position where they're probably wondering the exact same I thing because they ran their exactly. whole entire band time. Down exactly. And so. OG, they do have the last pick, so OG themselves <laughs> might not have decided. They'll ban an off laner, so they're actually assuming that... Seb's pick has yet to come. That it is going to be a Jarek Shaker, Topson Invoker, and an Anna Spectre. RNG will close things up with a Deucer, confirming our. So we, well, we still don't know the Pango Sankey, but it's most likely the Sankey is offline the Pango yes. AR your supports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we'll see from OG is the Invoker going mid? If it's Topson, is he happy playing Invoker against a Deucer mid? Uh, it's a bit of a tough one because if you get hit by Snake and you're going to give a pretty good lane to the Dusa, but in the later stages, mm -hmm. I mean, EMP versus Medusa is one of the best abilities because it's doing the double effect, right? And the damage and the EMP. And the you're not really bird. a hero that's going to be able to get away from the EMP, right? No, you're so just sliding in there. Yeah. Let's have a look. What's it going to be? It's going to be the bat. So that, what does this tell us? So Who's Mid playing Invoker, who? Jarek, Shaker, Seb Bat. Yep. Okay. So they want to make sure that the Invoker gets more levels and can make moves around the map. Now, we, we have seen, obviously, the couple of successes with the Invoker as the support Invoker, but we have we seen any mid-Invoker in any of the games you managed to catch a glimpse of? Not that we yeah. casted, but yes, I saw There's no one. No one played a mid-Invoker. He did cross Wex. I don't... I didn't get to see the end of the they game. Have I have lost no a few games, VP, one, so maybe it wasn't a winning winning combination. But we'll see, at least before this event... Uh, we we you know at least like the summit and some of the qualifiers we did see Invoker sometimes run mid with yep. not very good results. It's yeah. it's definitely not not the mid it once was, but it's a specialty it, for anyone's... Topson exactly. for Quaswex in yeah. particular. So and as you say, this is a good game for the Quaswex. You, you yes, versus what? Medusa, both cores sure. right, and the versus Ember. Ember Spirit. You can remove the Flame Guard yep. at all times with your tornado. Yeah. I mean, EMP is always going to be good at in this type of situations when you're playing versus three or four dependent heroes of that much mana. And the Bat Rider, this is the one that I'm wondering how much... I mean, they should be able to put a pr pretty good amount of pressure here on Monet in the safe lane, too, with the Shaker as well as the Bat. Flame Guard is not the strongest in the side lane, and especially not versus a Bat Rider. All right. So there may be... Huh. Because if they just leave AA and Ember top, that does not sound too pleasant. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're just going to die to the bat and the shaker combo quite a bit. Can they farm on an aggressive like, sort of setup? Hmm. With Lanham back in the... We'll see. Maybe. Lanham's got a fair few Pango games under his belt. 
Let's see if they can deal with the Chen. Because I still feel like this hero is insane. I feel like this hero does so much around the map. And he just makes it so your carry is able to just sustain it so easily. So that's, it's kind of like your, um, you know, we used to see the Warlock Spectre all the time. This is kind of just like, it just feels like a little bit better, at least in the link, because you get natural HP regen all the time, and you pop up the regen too. This will be cool to watch. Okay, let's go. Let's go indeed. As we get ourselves into this one, but ladies and gentlemen, RNG versus OG RNG flyby on the off lane, set to First on the item. mid Medusa Arfu supporting alongside Lanham, Arfu AA, Lanham Pangalip, and safe lane the Mono Ember Spirit over on the side of OG down bottom. We'll start with Jerax roaming around the map on his four shaker Seb Bat Rider. Mid lane, tops an Invoker, and up towards the top, Anna Spectre is going to be supported up by No Tails Chen. I think you have to keep Lanem down here for the most part, at least for a little bit. Just make sure you can secure a bit. Because I am a bit scared for Ember and AA if they're just alone down here. So yeah, Lanem, lots of moves. Where he's gonna, we'll have to see where he's going to make moves around the map. Because I do see he also has himself a stick already put inside of his quick buy on that Pango. So he does want to play faced up versus the Batrider to help out his safe lane. So they're actually going to play aggressively here, push Seb away. Which means that OG is going to play a little bit more aggressively up top to try to get that room to fly I mean, back. Flyby can go with the burrow strike if he wants to skill it. And he will. Well, and he goes, it. grabs it. Three runes for RNG with that play. Yep. He does have burrow strike now in the lane. Which can make it a little bit harder. Alright. Let's see where Lanham can find himself. Yeah, let's see where he decides to go. Maybe he starts top, makes his way bottom to make to like. He's just going to be shifting around a lot. We're just going to keep eyes on Lanham to see what lane he does end up in. Saving that TP, making his walk toward top. As I'm going to be focusing quite a bit here on the mid lane for those Mystic Snakes. As the first range creep does not get denied or last hit. And yeah, it's a started Bassy here by Topson. And you see he's keeping the Bassy on. So he's making sure that he doesn't get like double creep waved up. He's making sure he has a creep advantage actually over versus Setsu. See so up top lane. Yeah, Flyby is going to have to be careful how he chases this around Lanham. It's going to be able to get behind the tower, grab that upcoming creep wave, drag it back to a safer position. Setsu is getting doubled up creep wave in the mid lane, and he already is going to be level 2 plus on this invoker. He might look for a play here, at least to mess up quite a bit of the last hits, but yeah, we could see Topson play a little bit aggressive. So to get the range tonight. Oh yeah, not yet. Choosing to blow any combos on to set up. He's messing him up under the tower though a little bit there. Let's see how we're doing on this bottom lane, Monet. Pressure is gonna be on him from both Seb and Jarax. Hmm. As you yeah. say, what well, you you feel that there's the risk of this this dual lane getting overrun by these yes. two on OG? Yeah, I do feel so. I do feel like they can die quite easily down here. They step up at all too far. You get blocked by a fissure. They will start getting their stick charges up, so that's going to be the one thing that can turn it. They all, they both got it very early, so both having 10 already. So that maybe will be able to help them a little bit there. Thompson just keeps you. He's bassy toggling a lot for these creeps. As Jarex gets a haste rune, and there is a salve going off on Setsu right now, but there is a ward bottom to spot Jarex's rotation. Uh, Jarex realizing. Oh yeah, as soon as he notices the south going off, there's no, not, not going to be an opportunity in mid for him to make a play. Mm -hmm. Mono's farm still looking very good despite the pressure here from Seb down bottom. Yep. Now they will try and make that move with the Fisher block. There's the Flame Guard. It's going to be quickly taken off by the Firefly. He has the TP. Oh, yeah. That's the pressure that we expect to come out as soon as they get these levels coming out for the Bat Rider. Versus that Ember Spirit. Because AA, you can't really provide too much. The, the one thing you do provide, though, is the Cold Feet, which allows it, like, you can distance himself from the Bat Rider a little bit to get that TP off. But yeah, just gives Seb a little bit more time down here to continue farming. You gotta watch out how you step with Ezafu here, whenever Jarex is there on the side. Yeah, straight fish, you can't. I'm certainly catch you up. You're not gonna quite have the safety nest that the Ember can rely on top lane. Bye bye. And Lanham continuing to, to be able to get quite a lot of the, the creeps here as they drag them back behind the tower on this next couple of waves. But they do need the first few waves. Flyby has fallen a little bit behind. 
Obviously, Anna is able to get free farm, even with the creep wave pushing in underneath the tower. Yeah, they're not going to be able to pressure in this lane versus a Spectre plus a Chen. I think like, it's most lanes when there's a Chen, you're just pressuring that lane is extremely difficult. And now Anna's got the Sol Ring on its way out, so we'll be able to keep the, the Spectral yep. Dagger spam up high. Oop, he oh, he sold it. Oh, he sold it. Changed his mind. Changed his mind for now. Actually, queuing up a Midas. Hey, he's tempted. He's, he's like, dude, farming. I'm getting free farm. Yeah. They probably want us to brawl. I'm going to focus on just getting that very quick timing. He's yeah. getting free farm, and he knows that Monet's getting contested pretty hard by the Batrider plus the Earthshaker. And we, at the game that I did see the Spectre played, it had a Midas, so... If he can't get I mean, that type at, of At this rate, himself. he's going to get away with it, and it's, yeah. it's going to be a quick timing. There's not a lot the Flyby can do to to slow the Spectre down with no tail, constantly poking and prodding Flyby away from the lane. Lano's going to start to make the move over towards mid. Thompson is able to get the D ward. Jerex is here too, though. Both teams trying to make a play on each other. As Thompson going to eat a big snake. Got him. Dropping low, but there's the Fissure. And now the right click's coming into play. Lot him. It's going to allow Thompson to turn a little bit. Does have to be careful as Setsu tries to come back forward. Stick charges. Will be enough to keep Lanham fine. Both supports trying to make a play for their mid. Jarek's being there just in time to keep Topson safe. One thing about Topson is when he drops low, it's not as big as a deal in comparison to Setsu because he's got the three points in Quas. He's got 18 HP per second. Setsu, he's only got two tangles left on him, so he just Topson just keeps hitting him over and over again. But Setsu's still doing good in the last inch, 21 and three. So still securing a very good amount of farm. We had Topson full HP again. Yeah, it's going to be a Spectre with absolutely uncontested free farm, it seems here. Oh, he's got the gold for the recipe. It's going to be very quick. Did see... Actually, the courier passed a little deep. Did get hit once. Um, with it being already over there, it's going to mean that the recipe will be a little slower in coming out. As uh, Otherwise, he would have probably had the, the Midas done with this creep wave. But still, it's, it's going to be fast. It's yeah. going to be very fast. Regardless of the delivery speed. Still just protecting Monet. He's, he's still getting a good amount of farm. It's I'm actually, it's very good for him that he hasn't died. That's really important, at least for RNG, that he's been able to sustain down here with just an AA backing him up. So Lanham has been able to spend his time toward that top lane to protect the sinking. Oh, actually, interesting that Jarax taking priority of the courier. In fact, everyone is. This is slowing down the delivery of that Midas. Which, it's still going to be fast, but yeah, there's a little bit, you know, as a carry. Well, he can TP back and then get brought back by Chen, right? So, he does, sends back, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah he goes I was going to say. The, yeah. I was going to say, that's he really weird say, that he wants taking his the courier, but yeah, they have that type of ability for him to do that. Come there back in, Midas right away. So. There we go, so six minutes and a half. Very fast Midas timing for Anna this game. That's some advanced uh, team communication coming into play there, right? It's just like, hey guys, everybody else can use the courier, don't worry, we have a Chen. A maximum efficiency there from OG. Yeah. They have deep vision down. We see Jarex. He walks bottom, puts down a deep ward. They also put down the deep, uh, the uh, ward on the high ground up top there to keep tabs of the sinking, and also for you no know, tells people to actually pierce in and get these creeps. Is he's got a double centaurs, so this could look to set up for some kills, in particular on the mid. If they can get like a tornado set up, if Setsu's too far, they could look to go for some centaur creep stuns. And Fisher's gonna possibly go the longer way around. Thompson will look for the easier kill. Goes towards Lanham. That's your first blood. Finally, it's seven minutes in. Thompson yep. will find the kill. No tell. It's going to try and bully Setsu a little bit. Setsu does still have one charges and a fairy fire. Also the presence of Afu. Make sure Noto can't chase him down for more. No shrine available for 160 seconds though, so RNG are going to have to send both the heroes back to base. Yeah, Noto's just camping this high ground here with these centaurs. They hurt. They pack a punch. 52 plus 16. Every time someone walks up, hit by them. And they have their stuns available again too. And he has taken a point in the penitence early on. So he wants to be playing aggressively rather than going for like the more points in the divine favor that we tend to see. This is just like, I want to be hitting people as well. Getting some extra kills out of this. As the flyby steps up, they have a dust too. Yeah, I'm prepared. He has the burrow strike. He's stunning up the two sensors. The penitent slow. Do they have enough? They don't. And Ana, has, no, that's like seven seconds of the minus. Oh, Ana. He'll get on the big creep. There we go. Now, 1k lead now for OG. And they got away with getting oh. the Midas farmed up. See Lasso down bottom. bottom. They're the stun, the chains of the slight dodge, but 
the remnant is just over the line. Oh no, that, that was not the remnant. They're gonna that, tip that, that is sure. a tip there. What was that, Monet? Monet, Monet, Monet. He had sticky stacks on him. So sure, so it would have really been going, and, and the remnants slow. are going to go out very slow, so. but that was some very short range remnants thrown out, and he didn't have any in preparation beforehand. Yeah, I, I was. I thought maybe he was dropping a remnant so that when he comes back to life, he can jump back to the lane, but now he doesn't even have remnant in the lane, so. On the back of it all, Nafu's going to be found. Anna popping the horn just to help them keep vision and go for the chases. And going to look to Jaunt over and help the rest of the team. They are going to try and find more as RNG will turn towards Seb. Fisher's out. Seb's got the Firefly to keep the distance. Monet's trying to chase with the remnants, but he won't quite have the damage to finish off Seb. Oh, the slider fist is there. He does. Gets the kill. Now on the back lines, Thompson's able to run down land and fly by. Still looking to go. Burrow strike onto Thompson. Put the AA over as well. He's into the ghost walk. He's into the trees. They've got the sentry. They had the vision and Thompson will fall. Monet back in the game with the double kill. They had to commit two sentries though for it and a lot of rotations while Ana just takes a top tower. I mean, it's they get themselves the kill, but OG actually gets a little bit more gold out of it somehow. Because they get the two kills from Thompson in the back lines too. No, they actually cleaned up Seb and uh, they cleaned up Seb and Thompson. So Monet at least gets a big chunk, but overall, Ana's still very happy up top. A 10 minute rune coming up as well. We'll see who's able to hold on to control for those. He's really prioritizing levels, by the way, on the Spectre. He's not Midasing lane creeps by choice. He is waiting for that cooldown, walking into the jungle to find them. He really wants Mone. to get high levels. Monet did come around deep. He has flyby with him. Flyby's got a bow strike off, and in fact, they'll be able to turn and get the kill on Jerax. Nice play there. And now he can go back and get the bounties too. So two for two. Now yeah, OG will be able to scare the two ones up top, but Monet getting involved in some more action. Helping push him to towards the drums. We'll check check out the net worth situation and did you can see the effect of the Anna Spectre getting that quick Midas. He's about a 1k gold lead ahead of Monet's Ember. And if they don't put more focus onto that top lane, he's going to continue to stay ahead. Yeah, he's gonna be real <laughs> real farmed in this game, especially when he has the space makers that he does have on this team, right? He he's got the Thompson Invoker with Quaswex, who's going to be running around the map all the time. He's got Seb, going Boots Travel, who's going to be running around looking for ganks. So, yeah, tons of space for Ana to go for this farm. Is Seb still invis. Let's see, wants to make the aggressive play here. Setsu. Going to grab Setsu, drag him back into the stun. Setsu will finally get the mana shield off, but it may be a little too late. It's already the damage has come through. Setsu's dead. Moni's going to try and find the trades. Looking to chase down Ana. Slider Fist won't do it. Ana's able to keep the distance, and Seb, he's still running down our food. Jerax pops the Fisher, gets the Aftershock proc also on Mone. So now after getting the kill onto the AA, okay. they can try and chase down the Ember as well. The Spirit is getting thrown out. It's slow, but it's fine. It will get him back. Fly by TP's in. Tornado just flip him, but OG won't dive any deeper. They'll look for the easier kill. Echo Slam drop down onto Flyby. They find the Sand King as well. OG take three. Just pushing forward here with that Invis rune. Having that Hand of God too, so they back up the heal up, heal up enough to be able to get the rest of them there. That is a very aggressive move when you have a team with a Spectre doing those type of plays already. The 11 minute mark at your tier two. 2k, 3k lead hovering around for OG. They've just got the boots to travel done on Seb. With those kills, he's getting involved in 2-1-3. One, and three. This is Bats having great impact across the map. Thompson, even searching for a bit of uh, action on his own here, diving the tier two tower. Tornado's out, EMP's down, Lanham is dead. He's got the ghost walk, he's running away. Do they have detection prepared? They do not. Thompson's able to dive tier twos, get the solar kill, oh, and man. walk out of there. Loser indeed. It's and dropped down. A double loser. They even used a sentry too. So they've wasted they've used quite a few here already in this they early game. They used two. Game. Two sentries for that. They didn't get him. Thompson two sentries, two loser tags. Just breaking ankles. And making so much space for Ana. 4k gold lead already. Anna's loving life. And that's costly. They've, I mean, you only have limited amount of sentry wards now. If this is causing you to spend this many early on, you're not only spending a lot of gold, but so wasting a bit of your time. Is they gave the tome to Thompson, by the way. He just took one of them. Did they give it or did he steal it? Uh, I think. I mean, they, you, you, that's probably a give. Okay. I'd imagine. <laughs> it's not even. I'm taking this. <laughs> <laughs> this is my game, boys. Well, they were giving the. Uh, Anna, when he was playing Io, they yeah. gave him two of the tomes. They gave him the 10-minute tome and I believe the 20-minute, and I think oh, even one of the later ones, maybe three of them. And there is, yes, yeah, Spectre's farm. Yup. Oh no, you know, that you got to get that, that line in the chat, ladies and gentlemen, with the 
the little scared man pointing at the graph, rising, because that, that is the case with this Spectre Midas. For sure, especially when he's, you have an He's invoker, getting bigger and bigger. When you have a Quaswex Invoker versus, like we said, the Medusa as well as the Ember Spirit. These two heroes really suffer versus this Tornado EMP. Particularly the EMP versus that Medusa, of course, but Tornado versus Flame Guard is devastating. Let's look for some plays from Maranji. They'll smoke up. Okay. Flyby looking to lead the way, followed by Lanham and Arfu. Looking to, to maybe have hoped that Setsu would have been a bit of a bait, but OG aren't here themselves until now. And they're going to be well prepared. They're bringing in the four of them. And they've got four creeps. He's gone for the max Holy Persuasion, yes. so he's got two Magic Resist. And they've and essentially the got five of them. Horn is up and available from Anna if he feels the need to join the fight. Yep. So OG are going to go for this wraparound. The may just catch RNG Ooh, by surprise. Scan. scan does catch. Oh, gee, but They'll Thompson. see them. Thompson, he'll reveal himself, running straight in, going for Setsu. Now the horn comes out. Flyby will be able to get him with a bow trap. But Jerry's lands down the fissure and they burn out of mana. Setsu does manage to get the stone gaze out, but now he's got to try and run. He's sort of trapped him by the fissure. Surrounded. Seps on top of him with the lasso, who drags him away from any potential rolling thunder interrupting him as they killed Setsu. They killed Lanham. Flyby is also in a world of hurt as he's dusted up, surrounded, he's got the one charges, will Burrow strike himself out of there, now Monet does come Monet into the just fight, triple but everyone's down, he's just dead, he triple remnanted, you gotta tip him, you've gotta tip this Ember, what the, drop him a tip, he's out of the game, he's tilted, he's done, they probably just think that they lost the game now I at this think point, they with they that do. move, if he what? triple remnanted was in, dead. they were all dead already, oh no, Monet, No. I mean, it's a spec. It's three to thirteen versus a specter. They were probably feeling pretty desperate, and now you're probably feeling even more so. I that think was so. just a that was just chained. That that was a perfectly executed fight by Haley. Oh, though maybe they get Jarax. No. Uh, he's gonna have Fisher in a second, and uh, he's more than fine. Jarax, he's not gonna die. Lanem, Rolling Thunders, tries to get in onto any heroes yeah. there. The Fissure blocks him off. He's actually not able to get on top of anyone that he wants to. And in the back lines, I believe Ana just kills the AA during the fight. Yep, and now Thompson, some of them. He finds the AA as well. Quick Fissure, Tornado EMP Spirit Vessel. Quick kill set up as... Oh they're boy, just oh still boy. looking to keep running at them here. It's getting messy. OG hunting behind the tower. Jarax hasn't got fishing for five seconds, they might not even need it. He's going to look to try and walk in, fly by, will come forward with the bow strike. Stone Gaze is going to be popped by Setsu, he turns, they'll get Jarax. Can they get more? Money. Remnanting forward, Thompson quick with the Ghost Walk, Dust is out, will catch the two of them. Anna's DD is about to wear off, and Lanham gets the angle for the bounce with the Rolling Thunder. Good swashbuckle as well, onto the two of them. Tornado's out, Thompson catch providing three. the safety to get Anna out and not down to the low ground. Now Thompson can try and turn, No Tell and Seb are going back in. They'll go with the bow strike. Ice Blast. Hey, Ice Blast is out, onto Thompson, Thompson's falling, Thompson's dead. RNG, they'll get the one chains out from Monet onto the two of the swashbuckle follow up for Lanham. They're bringing OG low. Borrow Strike on Flyby gets the Seb kill and they'll chase No Tail as well. TP is coming in towards the tower as Jarex will come back into the game. Hellbear Smash gives Flyby a clap. Jarex set up with a Fisher, walks in with the Echo Slam, slams down Flyby. They get the kill on the Sand King. They're, they're looking at the Ember as well, they're too. Eyeing him up. He doesn't have any mana. He doesn't have enough, at least, for the, for the remnant just yet. Almost. He's poking. He's able to back off. Now they. They got what they wanted. They, Ana used the Midas as one. Ana also cleaned up two of the kills there at the end. So nice. getting himself a big chunk of gold. Pretty much going to be the Relic done. Yeah, it was looking like a pretty good fight for RNG there until Ana gets those two kills and sets himself up for that Relic now done already at 1650. With the Midas in his back With as well. With Midas and Phase Boots and Soul the Ring. The greed has paid off. And it's not only just that. Sometimes it's like, yeah, he's got a range, but he's also level 14. He's extremely high level because of that Midas. We'll get Jarex. Jarex caught out on the top, trying to farm up his Blink Dagger. RNG will be a quick to punish him. Lanham's starting to get him with some of these up Rolling Thunder plays. They have to be getting a lot of kills. They have to keep setting up for some type of like just constant fights because this Medusa is nowhere near as farmed as this Spectre. And he's versus natural counters. That EMP is going to always cause massive problems for Setsu. As Ana, he doesn't really have anything that he's super worried about in this map, in this game. Going on Sol and he gets a Radiance before that next fight is it's forced. A Radiance Ember at this point is going to be so hard for RNG's team to deal with. They have no, no sort of defensive measures. It's not a game where anyone's building up a hood, a pipe. Oh. That Radiance is going to burn them hard. Yeah, he's going to have it By, before, um, before the 20 minute mark or so. So how are ulti cooldowns? RNG, they could look to fight here. They've got Rolling Thunder in about five seconds, so smoked up. They are trying to look for something here as Thompson. We'll walk into them. So then turn. 
Go for the first strike. Ampy does burn the mana of Lanham and Arfu. Mono jumps in, but won't quite be quick enough to grab Thompson. Thompson's able to walk out. Jarek's also grabbing an Invis. Maybe able to set something up with that one. There'll be the smoke sent out towards Arfu. They'll shrine up. RNG still keen to make a play. Flyby's got the blink picked up. A very careful, quick hand of God there coming out from Notel as he is Divine favoring someone toward the bottom lane right now. It looks like they want to play around this side and it's going to be Seb who has a pipe and they also have triple cloak aura. So look at that. Look it's at that one. nice. That's two, that's three. What's the magic resist out for this Seb? It's very nice. Oh, he's not got the aura around at the moment, but without it, 66. Yeah. Even more so when those auras are nearby. They're able to walk in and that's flyby gone. And flyby, he did have that newly picked up blink dagger, wasn't able to do anything with it. In As terms of a surprise play. Seb is continuing the pressure. Won't be able to chase forward there, but... Thompson will head toward bottom to join them, and there is the Radiance at 19 minutes at level 15 as well. Oh boy. Thompson, Pierce is behind, finds Lanem with Jerex. Lanem won't be able Just to get the Just the control with the Tornado. Easily able to interrupt that Rolling Thunder cast. Making it look easy, Tops, in this game. 8, 2, and 5 on his Invoker. Man, when he has triple quas with 5 points in it next to only what level Divine Favor is that? It is max Divine Favor now, okay. So it is like 50 HP per second on Topson as well. It's a hard, hard game for RNG. In a very tough spot. We'll have a look. We know that Dota Plus, it loves Spectres. How much does it love a Spectre having a good game? Probably like a 83%, I'm going to guess. 89%. Ooh, man, 89%. And it's, look, it's, it's, it's sat around there for a yeah. fair bit of time. I think that was probably, this was probably when the Radiance was picked up. Bam. Actually, no, no, Radiance was picked, Radiance up, later, was picked but up later. on. Yeah, this was where OG got a, a big sequence of kills. The top fight. 90% 90, 90 yeah. for OG. And at that... I feel it's hard to disagree with that. They, they've got the Spectre Radiance. They're very far ahead of RNG, and RNG struggling to, to really find plays to get those crucial kills. They'll look to Seb. Even with the Ice Blast, they won't be able to bring it down low enough. That pipe keeping Seb alive. RNG, they've got to back up. Already a lot of damage being done by that Radiance that Anna's just picked up. He's got that Spectral Dagger cooldown as well, so he's going to continue throwing those out to chase forward Afu. Definitely dead here as Thompson wants to catch another big target. Oh, Monet slammed. Jerex is in, no hesitation, jumps forward onto the Amber Spirit. Flyby They're surrounded in the trees as the Sand King will slowly get right click down behind all it all. You gotta maybe call it soon. I or at least so. start just thinking about what you're doing in game two if your RNG is 23 to 7, 11k lead. OG with a lineup that's very much favored, went ahead. It's not even just like the lineup too, it's the way that they're playing around it. Like RNG wasn't able to even get anything off there because of the way that OG played around them in the fight. They just danced. They made it look so easy the way they just took that fight and nobody even took any damage it looked like. They just chased them out. Nobody could get any spell off that wasn't just a defensive reaction on the side of RNG. And now they just walk into the pit. Ana. They're gonna get hit by this Ice Blast, but they have triple cloak auras and look at a little damage. Five damage per tick on the Spectre. Seven that time. Six that time. So little to no damage being taken. Adam, they're trying to interrupt it. It is low. The bash. Can fly by do anything here, fly by. Tries oh, to go Fisher. for it, but die. Get the kill. They get the Aegis. Thompson's able to kill off the rolling thunder pango. And fly by. He's gonna be chased as well. He's out of mana. Jerex is in on top of them with the blink dagger. And not only get the Roche and the Aegis, but they get two kills to boot as well, OG. OG absolutely steamrolling over RNG in this game one. They are, man, they're looking more and more terrifying every game that I've been seeing them. They're just looking to get like, sh like crisper and crisper with their movements and with their execution inside the team fights. That those te these team fights have been like, this game were pretty much flawless that I've seen. That top fight as though both of these top fights, they went 5-0, right? Pretty damn impressive by OG and RNG. Now they're kind of just stuck. They're just sitting outside of their base here, unable to really get out because they know they're just going to get chased out and die. This could be a last last effort here of the smoke to try to get a big epicenter. This one or goes 5-0 as well. 
It's going to feel pretty bad. They're going to try and fully commit onto Thompson. Thompson straight away still get the time to find the tornado. Tries to juke it out, but they will they get, get him. Okay. They get what? Let's see if they can chase for more. Money's in onto the high ground. Little Ball 7. No tail. Jump forward with the swashbuckle. No tail. Very low. Nano's going to look to roll him down. Will find him with the rolling thunder. Rolls across, but they've lost Mone. Mone's been taken out by Anna. Setsu pops the stone gaze, forcing OG back. But Anna's ready to turn with the radius. He's burning Setsu down low. They do lose No tail. Anna trying to fight around this shrine Aegis. area. Does still have the Aegis. So he's not too worried about any of RNG's attempts to bring him down. Thompson's also bought back and he's chasing forward. He wants yes, to get Monet, who's Fisher. also bought back. It's out onto Monet. Monet looks to be on the verge of a dieback. The he's echo. To one more remnant. Anna's in onto Setsu. Triple kill for Anna. Finally cut down by Monet with a slight of fist, but it's only an Aegis. Anna's going to be back. He'll move towards Jerex. Fly by Afu, having to keep Monet alive. He's got a remnant. We'll be able to get away. Ice Blast is down onto Anna. Anna turning. He's holding his ground, punching into Afu. He's very tanky, he can now move back over to Mone. No remnant left, Mone will fall. It's a dieback on the Ember Spirit. It's another one. Fly by also getting chased, no Boris Strike available. More kills for OG as RNG end up all dead once again. My god, Ana 12, 0 and 13. On a Spectre, level 21, 24 Four, minutes casually in. Casually holding on to 4k Another, gold. He just got like 3k from the fight. He's got his Manta finished on top two. Oh my lord. Let's have a look at the Dota Plus now. It's now it's 99. 97. <laughs> okay. yes. Nearly. Oh my god. Right, it looks like he actually hit 99 and then for some reason it sort of doubted it itself. Was like, maybe there's a... No. I, this is the Spectre is way too big it's, now. I mean, it's a level 22 Spectre, 24 minutes in, pretty much. How's Medusa? Level 18, still decently leveled, but yeah. Oh, I'm talking about the Medusa. They've just gone and found her. Does get the chance for the Stone Gaze. They bring on her as well. Fly by is by his side, but Setsu slowly burnt down. Thompson finds the tornado. Setsu's out for a minute. No buyback available on the Medusa. The tips continuing to be thrown out by OG. It's Lanham. He's rolling away. Thompson is actually hunting him. Lanham will be able to claim the bounty room, but Seb's waiting on the high ground. Gives the vision for the cold snap. And it's just kill after kill after kill after kill after kill for OG. It really is. The 34 story. 34 to 11 at just 25 oh, minutes. The, you wouldn't think it's 25 minutes since the game when you see the kill score and when you look at this Spectre. 30, 50, 34 is so many with this type of, like, they're just able to make so much happen. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's insane. RNG just completely out of this one here as they're trying to get something forward here, trying to get any type of farm. But like we said, every time they walk out, they're getting caught. And now their respawns, 17 seconds until Medusa's up, 17 seconds until Lasso's back up too. So immediately when that Dusa is back up, they can look to just make an aggressive play with the Batrider, who's probably going to get Divine Favored or Boots to Travel in to continue pushing forward. And it's all been with Ana when he had just the Radiance. Like you said, now he's got Manta finished up, going for the heart as well. And they've also got the grab in mid. Mone caught out outside of his base. Horn being used as well as they're going to try and start hunting for more, at the least pushing RNG right back to the fountain. As into the base they go. OG know that there's not much to fear right now. David, just throw the hand of God, just make sure they're all full HP before any type of fight will even kick off. Fly by. Try for the entrance for the epicenter. Does manage to bring Anna down to half HP. What a force staff to push him out of the ice blast. Whose force was that? I was responsible for that. That was Bat Rider, right? That's Seb. It's nice Seb. force staff by Seb. Pushing Anna out of a potentially dangerous situation there. Getting caught by every single spell that they had. And so back up. He's going to shrine. Do they have divine favor up? They do. So he can just get brought back. And he can even go collect those two bounty runes there bottom. Just continuing to grow. He pretty much has a heart finished on the Spectre yeah. now. It's got to be one of the most. What's the, what's the GPM looking like? I mean, this is one of the most farmed. 700 GPM. Ever seen. Very solid. Most farmed and most XPM. I've uh, like experience per minute. I think I've seen on a Spectre as yeah. well. I mean, it, 700 GPM at the moment. But if they have a fight that they win, take racks, take the game, it's going to be 800 GPM. Yep. No tell. He is segregated a bit from his team here. We'll get caught out. Thompson. Most walks quickly just to disengage. Thompson. Thinking about going back in. The Madman, turned. Yeah, he's going to get rooted for that. Forced to the side by Seb in an attempt to try and pull him back to safety. 
be able to tell, call slap out Jax in with the Fisher. He's focusing flyby Thompson. He's into the into the sandstorm though. Flyby will be able to crawl himself away. Anna has arrived with the heart. Seb's hunting. He's got he the lasso. I mean, they're so ready to fight here. They've got haunt up in five seconds as well. They know how strong they are with this Spectre who is so far. Flyby tries to TP out, but the vision's there for the cold snap. To cancel his escape attempt. Well, they could almost kill the Spectre when they threw every single thing on him before with the Ice Blast when it didn't connect. Now that he has a heart, it's impossible. don't think so. It's impossible. Yeah. This is going to be a game where Anna doesn't die. Yeah, it does really feel like that as he's alacritied up. They're jumping forward. They get the last on. Setsu. Setsu is dragged back outside of the base. Not back even further by the Flame Break. We'll get the chance to pop the Stone Gaze. So we'll allow himself to walk back up, but already Afu being picked apart by Thompson on the back lines. Oshi can get back in, push onto the tier three tower. Onto the barracks as well. And very little RNG can do to try and peel them off. They can just watch themselves lose their barracks. As Thompson just keeps messing with Setsu, constantly spirit vesseling him and cold snapping him. And that's the first Rex taken out as the Spectre just continues have an extremely free game as OG firm grasp firm control three heroes all the way at the top there and yeah 9,000 ahead of course on that Spectre Anna's queued up a BKB come on Anna you don't need that no I mean he doesn't <laughs> but it's the safe one of course BKB it's the safe and the game with it I mean, when he has his BKB, they, they, they can barely even touch him. Yeah. I mean, they may just but look no, to fight right here. No physical, really, at all. Heart might cut up. Oh, he actually kills the bounty rune with the Forge Spirit. Absolutely perfect. As they get the bottom two, and they're looking to fight here. They're standing on the side. They've got the... The Haunt is ready. Look at the vision on Flyby. Flyby will be able to power away. Haunt being used. We're going to see the jump straight away towards our on the back, turning now around towards Mone. Mone has the remnant now. We'll be able to jump away. Lanham, rolling thunder, catches down for a little bit. Jax Ooh, jumps whoops. in, whiffs the slam. Doesn't catch anyone at all. As RNG are already away and out of it. Thompson finds Flyby. They block Setsu out of the base with the Fisher. Will Stone Gaze the Spectre trying to bring Anna down low? Flyby's in as well with the Epi. They're bringing Anna down to half HP, but, but the it's at the cost of Setsu's them. life. And indeed it is. They'll finally tap it out, RNG. GG is called OG with a very dominating performance in this game one. As they just made this one look incredibly easy. RNG, they never really got a chance to play in this game. The execution by OG in this game was absolutely ridiculous. They just... Yeah. Thompson, with the amount of space that he was able to make running around the map, Ghost Walked, he's made them spend like four or five centuries yeah, they just, they actually just picked RNG apart in this one, it felt like. Even if the draft didn't seem like so advantageous for OG, they made it just look like it was like a 90-10 draft. They really did. They, they certainly played it as such. The Spectre, and it just got away with so much. Getting that six and a half minute Midas, yeah. Radiance, and, and six, 16 minutes in, it, it was game over. Sort of, sort of at that point, when you see a Spectre get that much farm that early on, and you don't have any ways of... Of really hunting down the Spectre to successfully. It was a slow game for Mone. Mone making a yeah. few mistakes in the lane earlier on, getting punished, getting taken out. Seb able to make those quick rotations across the map, make the quick plays. No nothing just ever went RNG's way. No, it didn't. And even at the top fight, they lost four heroes. Then Mone triple remnants into OG too. You could tell they were definitely feeling were a feeling bit frustrated it. already inside of the game. Just it's, the way it went from OG. You know, definitely a game where, yeah, even at that point, you can tell RNG was preparing to just... Wipe yep. the slate clean, get themselves ready for game two. And they're going to have to. Game two is going to be around the corner. We'll see if RNG is able to bring in something uh, a little better than what they had in game one. As it wasn't great at all. OG taking another easy win today uh, here at the TI9 group stage. We'll see if they can do it once more. Game two around the corner as OG lead the series 1-0 against RNG.
Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the TI9 group stage coverage. I'm Odie Pixel here with Fogged and we're halfway through our last series of the day on this stream. OG versus RNG. Game one, pretty, beat, pretty easy for OG. Yeah, pretty much a beat down. It was a pretty pr pretty beat down. You know, if you want to check it out, go and check out the bots of course, but uh, not really a whole lot to see other than Anna getting 6.5 minute Midas, about 16-17 minute Radiance, and uh, didn't die at all for the entire game as a Spectre. So a free win for the Anna Spectre. We'll see what happens this game. See if some of the heroes that OG were running in that last one get taken away from them this time by RNG in the bands as the draft has begun. And, and we we'll do see, see what we're seeing uh, switched up. And there it is. Goodbye, Chen. Chen's taken out. See you. And we'll stop Node Sal from grabbing his Chen once more. Yep, I think that's a great ban. I think that they played really well around the Chen. Yeah, and it's one, one of those heroes in the past as well that we've seen... Uh, I think you know OG definitely consider that, that and allows them to play the Spectre. Yes. You know, sure they probably played it without the Chen, but if they get the Chen, they'll like to get the Spectre with it. So by taking that Chen away, you are reducing the threat of a Spectre being drafted. Makes me happy too because Chen is my most yeah. banned hero that I put on my predictions, and teams are starting to ban it more. That's great. There you go. I need a fair few more bans. I'm gonna need a lot more. But but there's a lot of games to go. There's a lot, there's a lot of games, games to yeah. go here at TI. So uh, everything could change. Same. So they still took out the Rubik. Okay. Now leaving everything else that we saw from OG in that last game in the pool. Those Shadow Demon was ignored, huh? Was that one of the few games where Shadow Demon was just unpicked, yeah, I don't think they banned unbanned? It, they? I don't think they banned it. You're right. I think that might have been one of the first games that I've seen. Well, both teams, teams picked the support oh, early on, but there, there it, it is. Not to be forgotten this game. Not this time. I think it was a mistake to forget it the first time around. Yeah. Picking AA can be all no lovely and dandy, but I think Shadow Demon overall just is a better hero that fits. The AA is also a very strong hero that we've seen a lot of teams been popularizing, but SD just seems to fit in every scenario. And having an SD is never a bad thing. Ten seconds remaining. Soul Catcher. Very strong spell. Having this save as well. Always nice. And it's also, I've seen a couple different positions played on it. I've seen it being played and S5 and 4. So it's not like super flex, but at least it's got a little bit. As OG, what do they want to do this time? I mean, who knows? With OG, they've got a bazillion different strats up their sleeves. We're already seeing some new ones from them today. Yeah. Yesterday as well with the introduction of their support invoker. Today with the introduction of the Carriana IO. Let's see if we'll see them go down one of the similar routes or maybe break out something completely different. I mean, if... They look Obviously like they're talking about a one-two combo because they're they're yeah. using a lot of reserve time already. And you know, STI every game is important. Yep. But they did just have a very easy win last game, so maybe this is a good time to to try out another strap. You know, this is an opponent that you can best pretty easily. Yeah, they like their Just stick with the Seb tree to open. I actually had a little bit of a thought, maybe that m perhaps they could be like, maybe, maybe now it's time to test techies. Right. Jar they're looking so good. Jarex, Jarex was spamming it, but I don't. I name with the tree now. That's more than likely Jarex, but still could be Seb. Well, you think it's more likely to be Jarex than Seb? Yeah, he played it in their last time that they played it. Okay. okay. When they had the IO. Oh, and just it was Jarex is stealing tree. all the Seb's heroes. He's stealing IO. his shaker, stealing his tree. Okay, so they get the Grim Stroke here. Grim Stroke on for No Tail and RNG. What do they want to combo with the SD? So, OG was one of the first teams when I saw them picking the Grimstroke that immediately the ca what came to mind for me was the PA Ooh. when they did the Inkswell plus the PA jumps. But that's an Alchemist they got to deal that's with now. They got the Alk. So they got OG. that big old Alk pick. You got to address this. How let's do you want see. to? Yeah, let's see. How do OG deal with the Alk? OG, they're a pretty smart team. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of plans. You're turning up to this TI. You're definitely bringing a plan to deal with an Alchemist. Let's Which see what OG's, gonna be? What, yeah, what OG's plan for that is going to be. That's RNG, giving a bit of respect to the old Seb Bat. We've seen a couple of games where people are trying the Life Stealers, and it doesn't look that bad. We had, uh, I think we actually did have a Life Stealer win versus the Alchemist just earlier. So that could still be a possibility they want. It's this versus the Shadow Demon 2, which kind of puts it off a little bit. But yeah, that... But but uh, as you say, it, it definitely feels like there's very sort of limited carries, at least limited carries from the the standard variety. Maybe they uh, still look for the slark. Draft against Alk. Right. Maybe they can still go back for the slark on OG. Yeah. 
it has been left in. May may very well be the next ban from RNG. Though. Yeah, I do. Think they did so, ban so. it out at a similar point in the the game one draft. So could see that Anna Slark being banned out again here. We'll see. Et it's going to be the ban from OG. That's making me think Morphling and Slark when I see an Et ban there. I think Mor Morph in particular very appealing because well I guess Slark is as well that gap closer with the ink as well, but Morph a little easier and a little more range later on with the the long wave form. Two heroes that are just incredibly mobile. That yeah. I'm looking for hero carry heroes that don't care too much about if you do get SD ulted. Yeah, or if you get disrupted into something. Right? Yeah. Slark should get the chance to get the dart packed and a pounce off, pounce away, and more you're likely to be able to start shifting. Yeah. So both heroes say not only really just not caring about the ult, but not caring about those early setups from disruption. And they give you good matchups versus the alchemist, right? You want some type of big carry heroes that will give you that. RNG, I mean, it's the bonus time on this ban, so really deliberating on if they do want to ban the Anaslark once again this game. Or if they feel that potentially there's another hero that could work well against the Alk, maybe they want to ban the Lifestealer, as you say. Something that we have seen being picked up against the Alchemist a fair few times. The other two sound a little bit more... That's Slark or Morph. More OG, more Ana. Yep. Even though sure he plays the life center anything, but those two just seem like it's more like his type of style, just going for these super carries. They're gonna focus the tops and invoker. Okay. Or the Jerax invoker. Or the Jerax invoker. Mm -hmm. That is the thing when you're playing against OG. It's also it's it's, it's probably the tops in because in this type of game he'd be playing mid and he'd rush a spirit vessel and he'd look to pressure yep. the alchemist very early, so you'd want that quick early spirit vessel carrier and giving it to Ana, or giving it to Topson is ideal. What sort of heroes do you want to be burning out if you are you're going against an alchemist draft? I mean, you, it's like the, the the playmakers right from the side lanes. I know Moni didn't have a great Ember game, but it's those sort of heroes, right? That yeah. that you try and get if you're RNG heroes that can make a lot of space, get active on the map whilst the Alks farming his first couple of items. Do they want to ban the Mirana? Because it's Lan M is available. Oh, that's right. You're right. Shadow it's Lanham. Demon, right? So. It is, and they d yeah, maybe maybe some bit of bit of respect to Lanham. Lanham. In games he's lost, he's had a good Marana performance, but oh, it's going to be the, the ogre, ogre that they ban. And they'll pick the AA up, the, the sort of classic okay, so this, way it to is help out against tree. the Alk. And yep. yeah, yeah, some Seb tree action. So do they... Well, do they I mean, is it? OG's the kind of team that could slip a tops in AA mid. That is actually extremely true in yep. order to rush a early Spirit Vessel. That is actually a very good point. Could uh, be a tops yeah. in AA potentially against the Alk. Do they want to go for something like the Oracle that we saw... Team Secret use with their Alchemist to counteract I mean, it looks so good, really. If they can play it, I, f I feel like the the Oracle is a bit of a no-brainer. It's a that little weird when you have SD and Oracle, but these double, these double uh, saves, making aggressive plays can be a little bit more a little more difficult, but... But you're going to keep your team very safe. Yeah, and it's it's like the best thing that you can do to protect your Alchemist versus an AA. How are they going to do it? Or are they going to look for just playing aggressive? Could be a discussion they're having. It's like, Lanham, do you want to play a Lanham hero? Or can we pick Oracle and Afu, you play, and then Lanham, you're just going to play Shadow Demon or something along those lines. Because they do want to find something to protect this Alk versus that AA Blast. Uh, disruption alone, not, not necessarily going to be enough. Mm -mm. They're running their time with this discussion. Probably assume that's what it is. It's okay, they're actually gonna go for Jakiro. Go down the more aggressive route, but as you say, mm -hmm. you know the the Alk certainly will be vulnerable. So I think this is the hero to protect the Alchemist is a dual lane. Protect versus our uh, train protector, as this was a pick that people were doing sure. very commonly versus it, tree. It is a strong lane, and, and Jakiro certainly can bully yeah. the tree. Tree with your very slow base attack time, the Jakiro dual breath is gonna make it. You know, that's that was what the whole logic was that people were doing it, and also. You're a, ta you're a tower hitter. You're a tower chipper. You're constantly liquid firing yeah. and burning down those towers. If the tree does get the armor, so it allows you to force a tower too. So those are the multiple reasons that people... I'll be that at least a little bit of a follow-up instant stun after the disruption down the line in the mid-game yeah. fights. Laying out that ice puff. Now, OG with this fourth pick will potentially start to reveal a little more on who is playing what and if that AA is going to be support or core. So we pick another flex hero. I was gonna say yeah, <laughs> but they they do OG do something you know sometimes you really have to wait to the fifth pick to, to work out who's playing <laughs> one. Even then it's still 
sort of up in the air with the way that they can switch around the the roles they want to play the heroes in. They're running the clock down as well. And, and it's going to be the slot. Yeah, honestly. I, I, I figured it had expected. to be. Yeah. Was left in the pool. So it's going to be good this game. Yeah, it just fits really well versus... The, the matchup versus the Alchemist can work really well because you yeah. just build up all those stacks. And is that hero, as you yeah. say, can could get away from the demon, demonic purge, at least play around it yeah. using the regen. That's why I was thinking, yeah, either one. The and morph, the Slark. Also yeah. getting away from those disruption setups. Mm -hmm. Back to RNG, still looking for their, for their mid lane and off lane hero. Both Setsu and Flyby. What are we going to see from them? Sand King, of course, was the last last hero that Flyby played. Not that great versus the Slark, though. Sure. Yeah, the leash is it's going to be a bit of an issue. So mm. it's got to look elsewhere, really, Flyby. At the same time, wants to be careful not to necessarily run one of those tanky frontliners that's just going to allow Slark to, to rack up the essence shift stacks on. Yeah. But at the same time, elusivity is hard, too, with the, the pounce in play. Oh, draft to Kunkka. Could okay. be put in the mid lane, could be put on the off lane. But I guess more likely to be set to in the middle. Again, they don't really know the matchup uh, that, that it's going to have to be in if it is that mid lane Kunkka. But at the same time, it is a Kunkka, so it doesn't matter too much. Solid mid laner all round. Mm -hmm. And he's got the Shadow Demon too, so they've got good ways to set up for it. Yeah. And, yeah. The one thing is, he's going to be playing Rum to everybody, which... Slark doesn't mind Slark at all. Slark's yeah, a big fan. Slark doesn't mind that. But at least this does protect a little bit versus AA Blast. Yeah. This is one of those that, you know, you get hit by the rum, and then the AA Blast, sure, you're not getting HP regen, but at least you're mitigating the damage that's coming out on you. And it's a catching hero versus Slark, right? So you have the X mark that is undispellable, so you can always look to catch that. And also, Torrent is a lot of instances of damage, so versus, like, tree armor on specific heroes, that can be nice, so... So what's the plan for Thompson? They ban out the Ember. It, yeah. as I said, it is most likely that it's it's still Thompson's hero that they're waiting for. Yeah, more than likely. But, like you said. Uh, do, do you want to play mid-AA against a Kunkka, though? I feel that's... Mm, you know, now they may not be... May not be the time to do it. And yeah, he can still offer a lot against the Alk, even in the support position. RNG for the offline. They are going to still go, gonna go for, for, the for the flyby Sand King. Okay. It provides him disable. Provides him a good amount of team fight anyway. So, makes sense that they go for it anyway. But yes, Lark. So what for Topson? What's left in? What are sort of the big Topson heroes we've got? Versus Kunkka, too. Imagine they just bust out the Monkey King. Well, I was thinking that, but it's <laughs> such a bad <laughs> right? game for it's Monkey so King. Bad. It's so <laughs> bad. Other than that mid matchup, it's, it's such a terrible game for Monkey King. What's it going to be? They did it! Called it! Okay. <laughs> yes! It was the game. Do it. I mean, it, it's, it had to have been the game for it's it. It's what Topson wants to play against Kunkka. Yep, it's the matchup. It's, it's not an easy game, and this hero... Has not done great. I mean, it's, it's not really done anything. It. Have no, we seen it picked at all? No one wants to play this hero. But it's the matchup. This is a really it, tough lane for Kunkka. It's classic OG fashion here. Something shouldn't work, but they're going to show us that it does. I couldn't think of another one. I was thinking, I'm like, hmm, it's, could he want maybe Storm Spirit? That was the other one that was coming to my mind for okay. Topson. That maybe versus the Kunkka, but there's a lot of disable. So this was the other one. Stuck out. Well, let's see. And he goes for it. Because, okay. it, as you say, it it's you're going to have that good matchup in the middle lane. But the, all of these other heroes, they're pretty good against Monkey King, right? Shadow Demon's hunting you out in the trees. Jakiro's going to be burning you down, slowing your attack speed before you get a BKB, which you don't want to get too early on a on a Monkey King. There's a lot of threats on the map for Topson. I wonder what build he goes for, too, because maybe he goes for this type of like medallion into like a Solar Crest build, and he just buffs up the Slark, because I've seen him do the medallion build okay. quite a lot of times, actually, on the Monkey King. Even though we haven't seen the Monkey King in a long time, when he was playing it, he just is an enabler. He acts as that enabler for his carry, for Ana. But we will see. As Yeah, we got the Monkey King, and we have the Slark. So they have heroes, and they have tools to deal with this Alchemist, with the AA as well. All right. So if they can do it, once more OG. Let's get ourselves into this one. RNG. Ready to go. I'm not angry. And there we have I'm it. Just uh, no tail. AA. Be thrown. The into the mix. To the above. As we get into our last game on this stream, at least OG versus RNG game two. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll give you a quick rundown. And low down of the team's flyby once again playing the Sand King for the second time this series. Lana is going to be supporting with his Jakiro. Setsu mid lane Kunkka down bottom. Afu supporting his Shadow Demon, backing up his man Mone, who has that all 
Uh, that all exclusive hero that hero that everybody wants on their team, the Alchemist in the safe lane. Thompson, he's already scouting it out on the map. Thompson, Monkey King to be on the mid, backed up by Jarek. Support, Grimstroke, support AA from No Tail. Anna Slark, last but not least, Seb on his signature Triumph Protector. And good to see that as well. No, uh, Thompson, Master Tier. Master Tier, Monkey uh -huh. King. Not he bad knows. at all. He, he knows, knows that this is the good matchup. I was going to say, he, he feels that this is going to be such a good matchup in the game. Yeah. He's going to have a brilliant time. This is, I do like this curry. This is, I have seen this, this matchup TI curry, was go this? very Monkey King favored a lot of the time. So so. Some of these stats here. Hmm. Oh, my God. What is that 3 million, 2 million that he has? <laughs> Top. The connection. Sanking. Use the stun. Ana getting up those essence of stacks. Now, Afu shows up in these Shadow Poisons. Starting to push OG back a little bit here. Jarex has another slow. Lana. I'll come back in and start going for the punches again, but this is going to be the RNG. Can get those two top bouncy runes uh, down three. bottom. Three? Yeah, they get the three at them. So Lana's. Greed. greed. Yummy. Yeah, good bunny for Monet to start off the lane. Now, so we've seen it's just sort of Alk and the safe thing put in a, a series of situations. He's going to be farming against a tree and a Grimstroke. Is this a lane where you think he's going to feel much pressure, or do you think this is a lane where we're going to see how Alk have a fine start? I think he's going to take a lot of pressure here versus from the stream protector. The base damage is very high. They can definitely beat him, put a punch onto Monet here every time he steps up for a creep. Top line him. He actually stuck around after using the triple dual breath on the first for the bounty rune, so he's actually pretty low mana to be able to spam and put pressure on up here. That mid lane tops him. He's gonna get so many denies. That's the one big thing. He's just gonna, he's gonna get the Jingu stacks up and use it to deny. And then maybe one of them he'll use to uh, like bound this to the creep wave and heal up. But Setsu, giving him the right click. But he's getting every single deny. Six denies. This time he won't be so lucky. The torrent almost collects, connects onto him here. Dropping low. He really wants to hit level 2 before he uses this jingle because he wants to bound this to wave. That needs just one creep to die. He's going to just use it on that creep. Yeah. Top lane, as you say, Lana. Pretty much out of mana. So, Anna, the pressure upon him is going to be a little less. Mid lane, definitely where the, the, feels like the action could kick off if Setsu takes a, takes a wrong foot. Against the tops of Monkey King. Yeah, he's still getting his last hits, but yeah, like we said, those denies are really going to start to add up, at least in the levels for Topson. And now he's got the two points in the Jingu, so it becomes even harder now for the Kunkka to get those. So every time he steps up, he'll take a beating at bottom. Monet continues to just get punched here by Seb with that Leech Seed point put in. Again, another hit. They've got the level two. They've got the Inkswell. They've got the stroke as well. Does it connect? It will actually hit on the Shadow Demon instead. It's because they go for the easier one. Didn't look like Seb could probably have dove under the tower for the Monet kill, but he plays it safer. Goes for Alpha. In fact, Monet tried to come back and give Jarex a bit of a punch. Jarex will be able to get himself out of there. But they get the first blood on the SD. Yeah, it did look they were very close to maybe going for the Alchemist there instead. Just played it safer. Hello. As Topson, he gets those stacks built up, and Setsu, yeah, nine denies. And he's going to get another range creep deny there as well. So, yeah, this is going to be a really solid, solid lane, as expected for Topson. Monet gets his Bracer delivered here by Afu. He will also eat the Sentry Ward for that extra little bit of regen that comes out. Monet's still very low. They get this disrupt, though. Jarex himself, also low. Swell on himself, tries to get back in, but dies before the stun comes off. So that'll be Jarex down. 1-8. And Alfu able to strike back in the bottom lane. He's going to pick up the items and bring them down toward the bottom side as well. Once they've got level 3, it's a lot easier for them to set up for those plays with Jarex. Because he's going to put the... Oh, top. They're going to put the two points in the Inkswell. Because the first the level 1 cast range on Inkswell, this 400 is super tiny. The second one, actually, even 100 makes a difference for them to go for any catches. Monet steps up a bit far. They have the Inkswell available. They're going to go for it here as Monet is looking pretty dead. They're going to get it. This is that pressure you're talking about, these two heroes. Especially once they've got levels now, level 3 on the two of them. Make those aggressive plays rather easily onto this pre-level 6 out. Yep. 
as Setsu's actually having to just jungle here. Every time he steps up to the lane, he just gets Jingu, Jingu stacks built up on him and just misses every single creep pretty much as Topsin is just completely taken over mid. Unable to get the sack as well, so not the maximize of efficiency that you'd hope to see. Oof. Haste turned up top, so we could even see Topsin at some point here grab this haste and make a move toward the top lane. Yeah, doesn't he has have a lot of freedom. Doesn't have vision on it himself, does he? No, not quite just yet, but... Yeah, we'll see if he does go to look to check it out. Slark getting pretty uncontested farm up top. So is the Sankin, though. Flyby is able to get a decent amount as Jarex does go down bottom, but Seb... He's going to find the trade with the help of that ink swell. Yeah. Have you ever seen a hasted DD rune? Yeah. Oh, he's got the... Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at it go. A hasted DD rune on a cloud. On a cloud. Who and this is the move we were talking it? about. He's going to get stunned, but he's still got time left on that haste rune. Oh. Uh. He's he's going to want to stick around and kill this, surely. Yeah. One more. He's diving. Chunk. Some more life steal comes into play, too. And there he is. A hasted DD rune. That, that is, that's an OS frog and a half. Just TP's back to the mid lane as well. Doesn't lose any time from that rotation. As Setsu just continues to jungle. So he will not be able to keep that pace of Topson. That's not a happy Kunkka. No. Some of the times I've seen this uh, when they do play this matchup, instead of you jungling, you actually just walk to the other lanes and just try to make plays. Even though you only have like level 1 X, you just catch a Torn from the side and then you can walk up and get the setup to follow up. Because like this, it's not very efficient. Well, no tell. We'll be caught out by Lanham and Flyby. Find him around by the, the neutral. Pulse. Oh, it did. It actually hit him. It actually did. It, and it was it, it had its attack speed slowed as well, and it still was able to hit. Oh, <laughs> no. my goodness. Oh, no. Nothing's going on that's, in G's favor no, right that's now. No, that's not... It's not going to be a very very happy moment for them there. It's, I'm not sure it's just a pocket, but early game, any sort of kill. And there's little bits of gold bounty. Not going to hurt if you do miss up on that. Let's see how this mid lane sets. He's going to come back in, but at this point, Topson styling on in there. Yeah, dodging the tie, bring a hit. He's going to drop. They all, in fact, both of them, both of them are going to be okay for now. Tops are staying within the ult. Ah, going to get disrupted, but that's going to give time for the ult to just start beating down on our food. Lanham, laying down the spells. Topson is trying to stay alive, but he cannot get any of the boundless strikes up to four. So the three of them will be able to kill him off. A big play and a big wraparound from two supports certainly needed. And will give Setsu that important involvement in taking Topson down. Forces them to bring three heroes in, though. As he does pick up treads, is also finishes up a magic one, so he's going to be looking to tank up a little bit more on this Monkey King, even though he did die there. It's good Top though for Setsu, he needed that. Top lane, Anna and Notes out. we able to get the grab on Flyby. They have the Sentry down and placed out as well. Seb at the same time kills off Mone once more. Dives the tower once again with the help of Jarex. Yeah. They're big fans of. They were the first team that I saw actually doing this, the maxing swell, and they're going to just continue to do it. Jarex, three points in it, high amount of magical damage, and Seb, as a tree with phase boots, he can look into Pierce into the jungle and look to find whenever the Alchemist does set up to go for those, and immediately look at Monet. Spotted right away, the wards placed down. Afu, he knows something's up. The D wards. Seb gets the observer before his sentry's taken out. Yep. So the job has been done. Keeping his own one alive. Sentry not quite catching it, and that's no tail gone. But Anna, he'll find the trade. He'll be happy for that. Yep. Permanent agony going the way of Anna. So it's a trade always is always worth the way of the Slark. Bottom Seb continues to try to look to put some pressure onto the Alchemist here as Afu will be the one to try to take the pressure off him. Oh, but the damage might. is really starting to hurt. That yeah. phase boots over Venom. He's dead. He is looking pretty dead. If one more hit. Two more, okay. TP comes in from Lanham. He's got that sentry out. Seb's gonna get himself out of range of it. Four stacks and of the poison. Lanham can't chase this. Not Seb's enough. out of that. Getting the kill for free, getting out. I mean, Seb, there's eight minutes in. He's got five kills on this tree. Yep. He's going for the very aggressive build too, with that, with those phase boots, with that over venom like we were mentioning. And Jarex now has been giving the lane bottom, so he'll be able to get some more levels on the Grimstroke. As Ana and No Tail, Ana is just given free farm up top now again. And of one of those games where you're going to see a quick miner's not quite as quick as that as his Spectre with these other items that he's picking up first, but still it's on track to be a quick one. Yeah, and he's got in kills too, right? So he's got an essence shift. He's got that permanent agility, which is I mean it's not a Midas, but it's a little something. 
And look, the Thompson's gonna go for. Her. He's gonna go for his own transition build rather than going for any type of medallion. Maybe it's just gonna be because uh, Seb is gonna be the one building those type of items. He's gonna just go for Echo Saber in his own right click to be able to scale versus the Kunkka as well as the Alchemist. As Yamone continues to try to recover, is under vision again. As Seb did put those down on that high ground. And yeah, he's actually just being the one to sit in the jungle while Grimstroke has taken the lane entirely. It's now Jarex has transitioned to a three position. Seb just constantly stalking them. They're giving us uh, information on every single movement that RNG is making. Yep, he's like, all right, they're running bottom. They're setting up for the bottom bounty runes. Team. Looks like he's been giving all the wards as well, as we see on Seb. So he continues to run now to put down these deep vision. So put one around this side here. Yeah, put them both on the high ground. And he can look to make an aggressive move. He's actually found Monet. And they have all three cores on top of him. Yeah, they have the overgrowth Seb's too. Seb's just seen them all walk bottom. So he knows that there's not going to be any help here in time. They get the kill. Boat will be thrown down onto Anna, but he's going to be more than fine to get away. Another essence shift. And that's up. Always getting this vision down, but Afu doing a great job of de-warding it at least in the meantime. But yeah, Monet, 0-3. We were saying we've seen a lot of the games in 12, 13 minute radiance. This is not looking like one of those. Except he's able to open up on Zalan and pass by the Ice Blast. Does clip him and tops is jumping across for more. Looks towards Setsu. It's him with the Primal Spring. He's got a Boundless Strike, re strike ready as well. It's not going to be quite enough to kill him. They'll turn for the squishy up. Arfu's behind Seb. And he's Seb. eight and zero on eight. tree. He's he's getting it all, Seb. He's getting all the action. And they're still playing around here. Thompson, though, he's getting X'd up. He's got teammates around, but there's a lot of damage coming in on top of him, and he's looking pretty dead this time. Seb is still lingering around the area. But they've done such a good job of slowing down this alchemist already. Like, he is nowhere near a relic. Nowhere near this Radiance. The Slark is actually ahead of him in gold. There, he's pretty much tied with all the rest of the course, which is not what you want to be on an Alchemist if you're an RNG. And with this mind, the Slark's going to keep ahead of him if he continues yep. to get pressured. They do get the kill on Jerax in the mid lane, Setsu. Happy to get him with that tie, bring a hit to finish him off. And they do finally find Seb. Dust is out. They oh, know that he's sneaking kill. around the jungle. If they can get this, it's a ton of gold. He's on that monster kill. They don't have another stun from the second. Yeah, he's just mana. walking away. Doesn't have mana for another oh one. Oh my god. All chat comes out. Seb knows he's safe. And this is three heroes just running at him, but unable to kill him. Seb is fine. And uh, very rich as well. 1,400 gold he's holding on to. We'll he's start now, yeah. Get hammer. that meteor hammer down. Yeah. Continuing to to allow him to make such plays. They're giving, just giving him all the wards. Yeah, no -Tail's literally giving him pretty much every single one. He has three sentries as well. Looking at constant, I mean, they have great ways to just check for wards, both between the tree and protector, as well as the Slark. Both these two goalies just walking into the jungle. You always be able to tell pretty easily if you are under any sentry ward. His bottom, looks like this is their next target. Nice blast, doesn't catch flyby. We'll catch Lana. Anna tries to pounce in the walls. Fly by fly by is able to dodge it. Mass TPs are coming in. Seb looks to hide, but they'll find him with the dust. This time he should be dead. They've got the setup, dragging him back into the boat combo. They'll get the kills. Seb's streak is over. Fly by getting the gold, pushing him very close to his blink dagger. Yeah, choosing to go for arcane boots on Sankey. I have not seen that in a long, long time. I can understand because he has the Jakiro in the lane with him, so he wants to keep restoring the mana, but. That is a strange pickup. Now back to the lane, OG want to return. Seb, comes straight back down bottom, joining the rest of them as they back up Anna. Got that sentry ward down as well, just outside of the tower range so they can keep vision of fly by going for these sandstorm plays. Yeah, they want to try to force this tower down here. They even have Thompson who's farming up top, but he has a TP available if he wants to come bottom and join us. Afu. They Steps up him. too far. That's one down. Kanoji collapse in for more. They're looking towards fly by fly by. actually going to lead him with the bow strike aggressively into the midst of the three of them. Seb, he's out with the ult. Fly by. Potentially going to die for this. They do manage to get on his the magic back. damage. Up in the shadow dance. Ooh, that was close. Fly by will live. 
Nice path on no doubt. They're set up for a second. RNG holding on in that bottom lane and pushing back the, uh, the attempts from OG. Giving time for Monet to get that Radiance. He got a lot of time on the left side to get the farm. As we saw, Topsin actually was looking and hunting for him, charging forward as he did push forward after that tower. Another dust. Zeb. They find him once more. Dragon back into the combo. Flyby's there as well to lock him down with the bow strike. They kill Seb off once again. Getting these kills on the tree. Flyby has the blink, and they're quick to look for more plays. Setsu in the middle, trying to set up on top some, but no tail TP's in. It's not quite ready with the boat to go for that attempt, and tops and being on the high ground, a little too deep for them to hunt. But RNG, they are striking back, buying time for this out. That's Monet, especially with these 15-minute runes. He's going to easily have that Radiance done. Yeah, he's got it finished. It's a little bit slower than some of the other times you've seen, but with the pressure that he's been receiving, I'd say it's a pretty damn good timing. Zana will continue to build up those stacks as well, too, for himself. Four permanent agilities. But yeah, there's the Radiance. It's finished. Yeah. They're looking for Sab. They'll find him. Again? Ooh. Are they going to have to find him? He's playing inside the trees here, trying to work around it. They've got him. No Xbox is dead. out. Is it Sab? He had that brilliant streak at the start of the game. Eight kills in a row, but now they've killed him off three times back to back. Every time Seb gets out on the map, RNG now well prepared for him with these dust plays. Starting to be really active around the map, just always responding, and they're making, they're just making quick moves. Oh gee, they're getting caught out by this one here as they're sitting back and, I mean, they're playing a little bit more farm. Ana still incredibly farmed. I believe he has a full Echo Saber finished up on the Slar. After that, Midas. So they've got double Echo Sabers. Hmm. And it is going to be a Desolator next on Thompson versus the Squishies. Low armor heroes pretty much across the board on the side of RNG. On the tower again, Lana. It's going to get dove upon. They get the old down set. Who's TP'd into this, but uh -oh. they're already prepared with the Wukong's command. He's surrounded. OG, they're looking for him. The backup does come in from Flyby. Still it's alive. a great episode of Thompson. Gets the bounce this off. He'll heal himself back up a little bit. Still getting those right clicks out onto Arfu. Thompson is still alive. Try and juke himself away, Monet. Flyby, they're hunting for him. He's going to try and jump out, but the acid spray will stop his ability to do so. He'll hide, but Flyby's found him. In with the burrow. They take another double kill for Flyby. As once again, RNG now starting to punish OG's over aggressiveness. As OG look to fight behind the tower, do get Setsu, but it does cost them a couple of lives as RNG are striking back. Monet, Ana, looking to just steal some stats here. Is there an A blast? There's not. Bye-bye. I don't have any follow-up to the Burrow Strike. But just trying to be in the nuisance for Anna, blocking him off. Getting as much damage down up with that Sandstorm. The net worth is even. And one A's game, continuing to have that space he requires. So yeah. we'll go for the BKB after the Radiance, make sure that he can be involved. Yep, got to protect himself versus the AA Blast, of course, since he doesn't have anyone else to besides the Shadow Demon Disruption. But yeah, very close here. Still that... You said less than 1k gold advantage, and yeah, the Alchemist has claimed that top roll, but it's not like that, you know, your Alchemist that we're used to seeing, but because he was slowed down so much, but not bad. Seb's got to be careful. Successfully hunted in the last few times, he, he's now got the Meteor Hammer done. Ana, DD rune, Afu. Getting we'll that get niche the, as well before the disruption. Yeah, we'll be able to try to dance his way around. Gets the demonic purge on Ana as well, but he's got the pounce. It actually connects onto Afu as well. Is it going to be enough damage though? It will just be enough. Another permanent agility for Ana. And he takes, of course, the lifesteal talent since he's versus these big tanky heroes. I think we've been seeing just mostly the lifesteals anyway on Slarks. I found Seb again. Again, Seb. Walking under the cover of a sentry that's been it for quite some time. We'll get the ults off, but the concoction's there from Monet and Seb. A fourth death in a row. Feeding away that early advantage he got with that big kill streak. Now seeing the river and attempt on Setsu Setsu. He got the boat off before, the bug. though. He has got that rum, keeping him very, very safe. Allowing him to walk out of the Wukong's command. Flyby now goes in onto Anna. Concoction's there as well. Anna does get the Shadow Dance out. He's dragged back. Ice Blast won't catch onto them. As Anna pounces away, OG have to retreat. They keep losing Seb before the fights. 
And it's allowing RNG to outnumber them. And OG can't quite find the bigger kills that they were able to hunt for earlier as RNG are getting bigger and bigger on their cause. Yeah, Sab's playing as the, you know, the, the one who gets vision for his team. So he's actually getting punished quite a bit there by RNG just being set up with all these sentry wards constantly. Getting picked off. They almost looked like they were able to transition into a couple more kills there, but RNG. They're looking to smoke up, so that means, yeah, Alchemist with the BKB timing. They're looking to play around that one here if they can try to find anybody. As OG. Seb wants to well, set up the top for these Seb. bounty runes, but they, they they look they're ready for him. They had the ward on top of that, that shrine, so they know that the tree is somewhere around here. They're hunting. They, are. they get the Ooh, dust. He's clipped him. Lanham, he lands the ice path. They're slowing him down. They're in with the bow strike. Trees are cleared out by the Macropire. That's a fifth time in a row that Seb's fed. As now, RNG, they're ready to go for more. They'll get the combo line down onto Anna. In with the bow strike. He will get the Shadow Dance off in time. He's got to try and run. Pounces out. Halfway there, looking to X chase. Again. They get the vision for the X. Bringing back Anna. RNG, they'll kill the Slark off as well. RNG getting some serious momentum now after a tough laning phase. Yeah, just setting up there for those bounty runes up top and they were able to just find themselves so much beca because they have that deep vision. They have this deep ward that was placed earlier on the shrine where they got that top tower. So they were able to actually see the rotations coming in as Thompson though. will be able to set up for two there quite easily with that ulti. And he's got a full desolator finished up. So sure, the Slark is very far, but this Monkey King is going to be packing quite a punch soon too. Rest of RNG's coming in, see if they can get on top. Flyby tries to blink in, can't quite get close enough for the bar opportunity. OG are able to disengage after those two kills. Thompson staying hidden in the trees. Jeff yeah, going for the BKB next, absolutely needs it this game. As we say, you know, it's not an easy Monkey King game. Once he has the BKB, a lot of his worries are wiped away. He's going to be killing pretty quickly, though, right? Like, these armors, like we're talking about, they're not very high just yet. It's 12 on the Alchemist. It's only 13 on Kunkka. And you look at the rest, and they're just as squishy, if not squishier. Everyone very low on armor in this game here on the side of RNG. Yeah, this Desolator will be, will be problematic for them once it gets revealed. And Ana going for a little bit, still going for Greed, still going for the Aya Scotty, but definitely going to need a BKB just so he doesn't have to deal with the X. The X mark is always a problem for Slark. As, and also, no has been having a little bit of tough time landing those AA Blasts on the mark here on top of Monet. And Monet has recovered very nicely with that BKB now too, so. Yeah, RNG definitely finding their footing here. Seb just keeps, Seb's just a space maker, right? He's just now running around. Since he has a Meteor Hammer, he can actually start putting pressure on lanes and start pushing. Could Meteor Hammer this next wave with the tower. Just gonna do it on the wave instead. Get that extra bit of farm for himself. OG, Jarex steps up a bit far. Flyby, he was prepared. Jarex will pay the price. Face a little too far, and RNG. Not only taking the tier one, they can absolutely look to push for more. Jarex down for 40 seconds. They're not going to fight. They actually find Thompson's tree there with the Macropire. Lanham is able to bring him down. Buys time for Flyby to come in with the bow strike. He's just dead. The follow up from the low ground. Thompson's gone. Lanham. Lanham indeed. Putting, Putting the ward down. down. He knows. He knows where Thompson's going to be hiding, and he finds him. Those are some big kills. They could lead this into the tier two. And the wave clear on OG is pretty weak when uh, Grimstroke is dead. Grimstroke is pretty much the only one to be able to take it, take the creep aggro off of the tower to be able to clear it. And they already used their glyph. They already used their armor trick. So yeah, this is, uh, this is a dead tier two. Seb will take a trade though, at least. But And he actually TPs out too. So okay, so he does at least get a trade for his team. But losing those heroes, definitely quite painful. As Monet is... Monet's totally alchemisted out. He's back now. Mance is done. He's got all the gear. And oh, there's a bounty rune up still up top. Look at that. Did they see it? It's a lot of money. Oh, someone better get that. Flyby? Nice. Full 1k gold swing from that bounty rune. OG. 
continue to still just farm up that next item in particular on Ana. Once he's got the Scotty, he's a lot tankier. He's almost level 18 too, so he's going to have the max Shadow Dance to be able to weave in and out of the fights easier. OG definitely being a little more cautious with how they make aggressive yeah. plays now. It's just, as you say, sit back, wait for these items. Because they know that they've passed a bit of time where RNG really has taken control of the game. You know, it's an interesting thing that we do see being built up on by Jerax. He almost has it as well. A full Aghanims. Aghanims, he throws it on the Alchemist. He's going to have his, his own, own Alchemist. Sure, gets his own Radiance. That's also Magic Immune. So he can stick it on targets right. pretty easily. So that's I mean, it's, it's something all right. that we're seeing right, but never this early in the item build. I, I don't get to see too much of the Aghanims, actually, in, in most games. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, we don't even see that common. Yeah. yeah Bounty runes are coming up in about 10 seconds, but RNG, they look like they want to just go for some siege already here. One is in. He's trying to force a reaction from OG. What are they going to do? Ice pass down onto Anna. He's getting forced back out and pounce away. Bringing him down very low. Thompson's going to claim the two bottom bounty runes. There's two up top as RNG does back up as they force some of OG back to their base. And, but there it is. The Aghanims for the Grimstroke. Already finished up. The so dark that dark portrait. portrait ready to yeah. go. And as you said, well, he's Spell immune. solely going to be looking to use it on the, the Alkyrie fight. Well, you can double. You can use your ult and get two of them around. Oh, that's true. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, get two for one. Yeah. It's a bargain. And he has the Aether Lens and he has the Cast Range Town too, so he can do it from miles away. So here we go. They're looking for the fight. Jarex is staying in the back lines, trying to make sure he can get the right target for it. Well, that's the jump, though. They're in immediately. There's the Soulbind the connecting the two of them. They'll look straight away towards Moni. Moni's got the BKB out, though, and that's Thompson dead. Thompson buys back immediately. But him and No-Tail getting blown up at the start of that fight. As Moni kills them both off, Anna's going to jump forward for flyby. Turns Boros straight. Mako Pai Anna. Anna, he's dying. He needs help, and he needs it now. Has got the chance to put the Shadow Dance to get it out. Thompson in the midst with the Wukong's command. Looks towards Lanham. Lanham's gone. Looking towards Moni. Moni's able to back off and run far enough away to keep himself Anna. safe. So they can get back in towards oh. the bottom in the river. Flyby tries to go for it. Anna's up to the high ground. Can they get him? They cannot. Anna's going to be able to make oh. the escape. My god, I cannot believe he survived there. He got the pounce up onto the high ground during the epi. Is able to survive, gets a regen rune, and now Seb's chasing. chasing. They found Monet, Rune's out, Tops is there to follow up. Quick concussion to try and stop the balance. Tops is looking for both. the angle, gets the two of the banners in. Hits down one, fly by, tries for the bow. The boat's coming out onto Tops and can't sense you finish up the damage. He cannot, Tops will live. And Anna just picks up another Afu left outside of the base. OG coming back into the game with that buyback from Thompson. I cannot believe Ana survived all of that. Between the tree armor as well as the little jukes left and right being able to dodge out any type of damage there, he's actually able to survive. I thought he was for sure dead there from RNG. Thompson, excellent buyback to be able to get into the back lines there to protect the rest of his team. If he didn't do that, that could have been a pretty devastating fight for OG. He ends up making it a pretty decent one though. <laughs> Four can lead still with RNG. Two still have that Alk at the top and <laughs> very close to having the AC. Everyone's spamming their nice subs. Setsu going full utility. Yeah, the Hex. Always going to be nice to catch. And yeah, like you said, the AC is going to be really important for the Alchemist. They need, they need armor to buff up versus that. Annoying Monkey King with that Desolator early on. And he, yeah, he, he pretty much has it done, so. Very big for RNG. That they don't actually, like, at least it's like they started the fight on the opposite side, too. So they don't lose, like, a tower. Or it turns into a Roche or anything like that after all that. And Thompson still has to be a little bit afraid now, too, because he did use his buyback, so. He has the BKB, though, so, okay. Maybe now doesn't have to be so careful. Just gonna look to build up into the Aghanims next. Mm -hmm. Very, very value item on a Monkey King. They're pinging, uh, so I think Setsu oh. is just is starting to see the Dark Portrait because he just pinged out uh, Grimstroke after they saw it in that last fight. Still back up together, OG. They have good lane controls right now. They have bottom, mid, and top all pushed. Sticking around the area, and this is a double BKB timing now for OG. They could definitely be looking to go take for this fight as the courier is coming to deliver Tordana. Do they have a smoke on them either? 
or on the courier. They do not actually for the side of OG. But do believe that they're going to look to try to find some type of engagement. Let's jump fly by. Bye -bye. He jumps forward here. Going in aggressively, he slides himself out with the full start to get the poke combo down onto No Tail. Anna's going to turn, start to rip into fly by, fly by. He's dead. They'll take the trade one for one. See if they can get more money. Trying to fight on forward as he makes a run straight towards Jarex. Quickly, the living armor's taken off and they find themselves a second kill, RNG. Same the time. Backlines, though. Thompson's able to pick apart Lanham. Lanham will buy back money, popping the BKB. He's in the Wukong's command, will make his way out of that. Anna with his own BKB trying to stay on the target. He's building up the essence here, stacks, jumps forward. BKB will last long enough to make sure he doesn't get leashed, but he's still getting slowed down by the Echo Saber, by that Scardi. Money runs back and with Lanham making that wrap around, he'll keep him safe. Now Thompson turns towards Setsu. BKB's pop. Zeb lips slowing him down with the life steal. They've got the kill. Hobson will find him. That's Setsu down for 65 seconds. No buyback. As that was two buybacks from RNG in an attempt to turn that fight around, but OG still end up coming out on top. <laughs> both of the very high mobile cores on the side of OG, both Ana as well as Thompson, they jumped into the back lines right on top of Lanham and Afu and made the fight really difficult for them. They also killed Flyby right at the start of it. So they didn't have this sanking, which is a big deal right now for RNG. And so many essence shift stacks. This Slark still has 32. And they're still hunting. Seb's on top of our food. Tops is going to be there with a the jump down. Defensive destruction buys him some time. Our does manage to get some money purge out. Thompson, he's got to be careful. He may have given his life for that one. He tried to commit for the SD kill, but he's dead for it. Dead for 110. And is still trying to fight on. The oh, they're going to turn. That flyby is going to have Burrow strike up in a second. There it is. It connects onto Anna. Mono's in with the damage. Is it enough? No, Anna pops the BKB. He's turn. got so many stacks. He's got a lot of essence shift stacks. This boy, 46 right now. He's losing them, but he's keeping them behind. Oh as Sand King's out as well, Anna gets two more permanent Aji. And look at Lanham. He's starting to run away. The Dark Portraits do disappear Should there. Should be another easy kill for Anna. Thompson giving his life away there for Anna and Jerex to just turn it around with the two of them. Was that a two? Was that like a two versus four? I think it was. It was at the start. Until that tree came in from the back lines. Look at Anna's levels now. He's pretty much level 25. Off the back of that fight, the back of those trades. Yeah, this Dark Portrait's also doing a crazy amount of work. I saw him in two of the fights now. He gets a Dark Portrait on the Alchemist, and he just sends it onto Shadow Demon. And Shadow Demon can't do anything. He just has to run in circles, trying desperately to get away from this Alk illusion. That's an easy rush for them here. That Solar Crest on Seb. And still, they had about 30 stacks left on Ana, so as soon as they go into that pit... They kill it very quickly, and that's got to be an MKB pretty much done for him as well when he does choose to pick that one up. You should have known better. He's got the javelin, the quarter staff out in the car. Yep. Yeah. The demon edge pick up. Backpacking his Midas. So MKB, he can stick on the targets much easier and not have to worry about always having his BKB to be able to hit versus that alchemist, hit versus that Kunkka, having that true strike coming in. Yeah, we'll try and get his 25. Done before the next fight as well. So next time we see him see, see him have those 40 plus essence shift stacks, it's going to stay there extra long. Yeah. Now Zana for a second game in the in a row, pulling out a top top tier carry performance. Yeah, and Thompson being the kind of I mean typical Thompson, right? A little bit of a sacrificial lamb, nine six and six, but still having a very high yeah. impact in he's, the game. He's making it work. Yep. We said it wouldn't be easy. He's done a few times. It's, it's not easy for Tops in this game. Mm -hmm. Setsu, as we saw there, he picks up a Blink Dagger as well. So Blink, Halberd, BKB. His damage is pretty low, but it's he's more about just like protecting and making sure that he can cover Monet. And to spot Anna out with this wall, but it's a hard one to jump on. He's got Aegis and BKB. He is very split up for the rest of his team. He's getting armored up. He's got another Dark Pact in a second, but he is getting X'd. He has BKB available if he wants to. Thompson in the tree line. The Ice Blast on Monet, and that's going to give Anna the go ahead to go in and jump straight away onto the out. There'll be a defensive disruption. Thompson, they're going to get on top of Setsu. Setsu has the disarm. BKB will allow him to pop the Boundless Strike down onto Monet. They'll jump across Anna, getting low. He pops the BKB on his first life hit. Oop. Looking a little awkward here for OG. Setsu trying to get back in. Won't be able to get the grab. So BKB charge forced out from Anna. 
Well, Clip Jarex on the side. Soul Got the portrait. Dark portrait of the Alchemist is indeed out. Jarex will die for it, though. BKB's been popped by both the cores of RNG. Xana and Seb watch from the high ground. Seb's in with the blink. Jumps in, gets the two of them with the ultimate. Ice Blast comes crashing down on Setsu. Yours up into the sky. Fly by. Burrow Strike as well. Another route south from Seb. They'll chase the South Kick. Fly by is dead. Now Monet's the focus. Anna in with the pounce. Gets the leash connection. Still has the, the Shadow Dance to play with. And there it is. Moving forward, Ice Path does catch him back from Lanham. Jump in from Setsu. He's able to hold himself back in the base with the X mark so he can get out, get the kill on Notel, and disengage safely. Three dead on OG as RNG will hold themselves. Push back a fight where OG were trying to get the most out of that Aegis usage. He still has the Aegis. But RNG able to find the favorable trade in terms of numbers. Yeah, able to get that. Big Thompson kill in particular, but the yeah, is just seeming so hard to kill, especially when he's getting buffed up. I keep seeing Seb, he's just standing on the side there, he's there throwing the Solar Crest as well, the tree armor, making sure that that Slark's able to just keep building up those stacks inside of the fight. But yeah, they keep getting Thompson. And Monet, he's starting to hit, he's pretty much critical mass now. He's gonna have that Abyssal Blade finished up at any moment too. But the bounties, this time, OG will get all four. She says he's changing his mind. From the Hex, going back to, to the more standard just damage mm -hmm. that he feels the team's lacking a bit of at the moment. It is pretty significant for him to have that type of damage, as we saw in the last few fights, that he's been uh, making sure that he clears the Dark Portrait every single time. He just walks up and starts cleaving them, so at least he can do that to kill them, as he does still dish out quite a lot with that Tidebringer. So, I mean, with one, one crit cleave, he will kill the Portrait. As Jarex, as we said, he was pretty much given that like three-position kind of role. He has a full Hex now. So double hexes, double portraits. Definitely going to be possibilities here for Jarex and OG. Well, Sorry, team. They're all grouped up together. The line is drawn by OG to try to catch them off. They still have 18 essence shifts, so he's still pretty strong here on the Slark if he can find somebody in the back lines. The dust are starting to be popped. Do try, they know Seb's around, but they don't quite get him. In fact, Dan is going to jump forward. Look towards Monet, Dark Pack, removing the unstable concoction stun. Ice Bar from Lanham will be laid down. By RNG, the space and time to move back to the safety of their base. And just making sure that even if you just like, you get a couple pokes on them, right? You just you keep your Essence Shift stacks going so that you can be ready for the next fight that's coming up here. As they still have ages for about 20 seconds, so they're really trying to force the issue here as much as possible. As Topson will be the one who clears and catches the side waves, it looks like, with that long, long primal spring and tree dance. OG splitting themselves up, getting more on the map here than RNG. RNG grouping up and getting themselves outside to get some defensive wards. As Setsu has committed for the full Daedalus. It's okay. To secure up the second. One eight. To the high ground he goes. Has to put the BKB straight away. Starts to try and punch towards Anna. In fact, Flyby finds the follow-up Burrow Strike. The Aegis, as you say, is gone. And has got the BKB in the Shadow Dance to rely on. And in fact, looks like the back RNG line. there. Stuck in the Wukong. All three of them just getting shredded by the tops and all. As Thompson again able to find these wraparounds, and he's not done quite yet. Jumps forward, he's on the high ground, he's in position to take down Flyby as well, with Anna by his side. Flyby falls, no buyback available on the Sand King. Triple buyback comes out from the rest of RNG. Sex mark, boat set up, looking for Thompson, Thompson. Shut down low by the Doran and the boat combo. Setsu's trying to get in. But Thompson's able to turn. He's disarmed. Is out. He's still alive. Falls incredibly low. Ice Path does catch him, but there's no follow-up damage from range. And Thompson will be able to walk out to safety. Anna does go down. The Aegis, they didn't have it anymore, of course. And he, he was diving, was diving too far. He, he, I mean, that, that was very far. He yeah. was diving tier four towers, Anna. He almost got Monet. He got him down to like 20% HP before the rest of the teammates got there. But even if he gets Monet, does he get back out? Yeah, that was very far that forward. Was, that was a deep dive. Oh, the Dark Portrait is chasing the Kanka Setsu. He will survive. As Jerex will go down. He almost died. Thompson. Does manage to jump back in, get flyby. That is a dieback on the SK. They get Lanham as well. That would be two diebacks. Monet. 
Heads in, tries to go for Seb. Seb's back into the invis. Tops supports the BKB. Looks to Mone. Mone, he's getting the bashes out. He's controlling Tops, and Tops is trying to run away with that BKB. He's into the trees, jumps out in time. It's on the high ground. Mone won't be able to trap Topson. Beautiful glimmer there. He got glimmered by No-Till. Topson wants to go back in. He has the Jingu. He's, he's got the balance strike. Tries to go for a blind hit. Won't get the connection. They buy a gem. Yeah, that glimmer came back. She just ends up saving Topson there during that BKB. OG getting a little bit ahead of ahead of themselves there, diving too far forward. That was a very deep dive from Anna. A big kill to give up. I'm gonna slark. Yeah. Only second time that he died in this game. Yeah, and Monet now hitting 25, so he hits a lot harder. And yeah, with that abyssal blade too, he yeah, Anna does have to be a little bit careful. He will be able to have that butterfly soon, which is gonna be a great matchup versus the alchemist, who usually doesn't really have space to go for that MKB. He's approaching that soon. I think you know, understandable. He says he says this is this is getting into rapier territory. Oh, I hope he does it. Haven't gotten. A, I don't think we've gotten to see a rapier, have we, on ours? I mean, we've seen some on the other streams, but not for us. DD rune bottom. So 40-minute mark hits. We have the double power runes coming out here, and yeah, Anna definitely could look to pick up his butterfly, and they could look to grab that DD and make some plays, but we do see Illusions starting to be pretty annoying as they're pushing out, but also, he can just Dark Portrait those Illusions and make his own Alchemist and push out the lanes himself. As we do see, he's farming the jungle with it at the moment. Anna, he's on the high ground, he's gonna find Arfu. Be a quick and simple one, the Shadow Demon caught on the front lines, rest of RNG back off. Yeah, DD plus the Butterfly. Pretty scary timing here for OG. See if they can make anything else happen of it as that SD is dead. They have about two minutes till the Roche. Setsu's so just gonna wave clear. Two catapults still alive. And the rest of OG are making their way down. Let's see who the first to go is, it's RNG. Sweeping from lane to lane. <laughs> Setsu just making sure he's not letting them have those creeps hit his tower at all. And it's working. Certainly slowing mm -hmm. down and making it a lot harder for OG to see a chance to go for high ground. They're still keeping this lead though, that 9k gold lead. They have these heroes that transition to, they have, I mean, they have Slark as well as Monkey King versus just the Alchemist, who's really the carry. And the Grimstroke, who is pretty much became a third core, as we were saying. He's got that Hex, he's got that Agonims, and now also a Blink Dagger on top too for the positioning. Level 25 also becomes really scary on uh, Grimstroke. The Ink Swell Radius, plus your Dark Portrait. The Dark Portrait, you can't stun them or anything, and then the Ink Swell just connects on you very easily with that massive AoE stun. So you could definitely see that coming out as Soji. They get themselves an Arcane Rune. Arnji's going to go for the smoke. Oh, Topson jumps it. in, he's going to dispel the spot, but they got them spun straight away. Flyby finds him, the follow-up concoction, and they got the damage to kill the monkey here with the Abyssal Blade. Drop down, they do, that's Topson dead. Topson bites back immediately, and upon the BKB, still has the Shadow Dance to play around with the double hex, comes out, as well as the Dark Portrait. Now on top of Monet, Monet tries to run towards Jarek, Jarek has been surrounded. Monet's got the second kill on the A, but Monet loses his life, and Monet's dead for two minutes without buyback. Anna is on top of Flyby, also without buyback available. As OG can now look to push on Topson, he's found himself another by the looks of it. Lanham, he's been discovered as Lanham dead as well. Another hero out of the game without buyback available. OG can look to go They're straight for the tier fours yep. after they after they take at least one of the tier threes. They are going to have to settle for that first, but they should have no trouble doing so as they collapse behind the tower. Kill off Setsu. They keep what you got to take a tier three first, boys. I'll go for the bottom one. In fact, they're looking to even dive in the, dive they in the base They have no buybacks. Anna Anna's in. is just diving into the fountain, onto Setsu, eating him up, building up the Essence Shift stacks. GG, GG is called. And OG will take game two, taking the series two to zero against RNG. Not quite as easy for them as the game one. Sure. But they had a little bit of fun with